Hey everyone, welcome to Game Face episode 1-fo-fo on Sifted Games at sifted.net. We are in the eye of the storm this week, Matt. Yeah. Calm. Yeah. Quiet. It's calm and quiet, but... Short. This is like... This is gonna... This is legitimately going to be a short episode. He said for the 40th time. This is, I think this, a, history. this might be. This might, think, there might actually this be. This is the first episode we only have four topics, I think. Yeah. I don't know if we've ever only had four. And there's not a lot to say about one of them. Yep. So, <laughs> really? We're going to be honest. Get your questions ready for the Q&A at the end. We'll answer as many as you guys got for us, because I think the, the base show is going to come up short compared to most episodes. But we do have two great games to talk about and a couple other interesting topics, so it should be fun. Uh, let's see, any housekeeping I got for you guys? We're shooting new episodes of Pactor Factor next weekend, not this one coming next weekend, so start thinking about your questions for that. Uh, T-shirts, still haven't broke even, so here we are. <laughs> I'm in the rotation, I've got the white one on today. Matt's rocking the OG sifted shirt. Yeah, this is, you can't get this one. Yeah, you actually, can you? there is one left of that <laughs> shirt, I think in small or medium. Mm. And actually some people have been really smart and what they've been doing is they're buying the new shirts for full price. And because they're already paying shipping, they're mm. buying up the old ones. You people are geniuses. Thank you so much. Cause the old shirts are five bucks. Right. So they're like, here's $5, throw the extra so shirt in So a small them. live viewer yeah. could, could potentially walk away with this one. Yeah. And there is one left, I think of that, that one. There's none left of the fire ones. There's a bunch of mediums left in the Sleep is for the Dead shirts. Mm -hmm. And I think there's one small of the black with the gold metal flake screen. But uh, if, look, if you guys are buying some new shirts and you missed out on the earlier ones, just order one of the early ones for five bucks and we'll toss it in there for you and it won't cost you really any extra shipping. And, a lot and of everyone you buy ups Shane's wife's mood by one little yeah. tick. <laughs> It's... She gets a little happier with them every time you order another shirt. Yeah. Every time, like, I, because I, I ship, like, we ship the stuff once a week. So, like, every morning when she comes out and she sees, like, the stack of shirts, she's like, okay, good. Like, that's more of them that are leaving the apartment. Thank you very much. So, uh, so yeah, uh, thanks, special thanks to some of you guys who have just ordered the whole collection of the new ones. There's a bunch of you guys who just ordered one of all three colors. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Still in the hole on the shirts. Hopefully, I'm hoping in the next two weeks here we can break even. Sure, it would be nice to make a profit off something for once, but mm. it's so funny. Like, my mind at this point is just like, that's just not going to happen. So, I just root to break even on pretty much everything at this point. But, uh, but yeah, shirts are in there. 25 bucks. Buy one of the old ones. Toss it in. It only costs 5 bucks. It won't cost you any extra shipping. And it will make my wife very happy. And make me happy as well. So... Let's get on with the show. We got two big games to talk about. The first one we're going to talk about is Starlink. Matt and I have been talking up this game for a couple months now, yeah. ever since E3. Mm -hmm. We got to play it at E3, and that was the first time I saw it where I was like, oh, wait a minute. Like, this game actually... This is a thing. Yeah, yeah. it's like something worth keeping an eye on. After E3, I think I w it was one of the games that I said that like most pleasantly surprised me at the mm -hmm. show. Uh, and it's here now. Uh, Matt, you're playing the Xbox One version. Yep. On the X. On the X. And I'm playing the Switch version. Ubisoft asked me which one I wanted, and I chose Switch because of the Star Fox mm -hmm. stuff. I also did get the Star Fox one. I just haven't opened it. You've actually bought all three, right? I did. I got a digital <laughs> version of the PS4 version last night because I was a big, impatient gorilla. Yeah. And I played, played like 70 hours of, of Assassin's Creed, and I'm like, give me something that shoots. <laughs> like, I still have not finished Assassin's Creed, by the way. No, neither have I. Uh, I'm at the end. I believe I'm I am... level 50. I'm at the cap. I've done a whole bunch of stuff, but I am not. I'm not done yet. Yeah, I am right at the end. I am at the final boss. But this game, that game, literally has just destroyed me for like two weeks. Like, like I was done with Origins by this point. Yeah, like 100. percent Like not with the DLC. The DLC was another 20 hours on top of it. But I was done with Assassin's Creed Origins 100 percent by now, and I am nowhere in sight i haven't even so been big. to sparta yet it's so big like it's huge it yeah. is if, I'm you, wondering, if all you want to buy is one more game this year there you Assassin's go Assassin's creed odyssey is your, your boy i'm wondering if starlink is significantly large in i think it is game. um if you want to do everything i mean it's basically no man's sky with the ubisoft open world model applied um if you played No Man's Sky and you didn't like kind of the, the lack of objective, sort of the meandering, sort of what do you do, make your own fun thing, like this is pretty much the same thing as an arcade arcade shooter with tons of missions and locations to go to and things to do. Like this is a much more directed experience, but it gives me a similar 
feeling of exploration and like flying around an alien planet and scanning weird creatures and finding strange things and blowing them up and like you know it, it's it, it scratches a similar itch in I a mean, much it more looks, <laughs> you when you first look at it it looks like no man's sky 2 or whatever yeah well i, I don't think it's a, it's not this planet this is the first planet that you go to but yeah. the second planet is called haven and I think it's intentionally made and colored to look like the trailer planet from No Man's Sky. The, yeah. the trailer, the planet that was in the trailer of No Man's Sky, it's got pink and red things everywhere and green water and like I mean, it, it's it's a crazy alien environment, but it it evokes that for sure. This game is much more action oriented, way yes. more ship combat. I mean, combat really makes up the bulk of the experience, at least based upon what I played so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is, there's some exploration, there's some puzzle solving, there's some platforming of all things. Yeah. Um, there's some, there's some jump because you actually spend a fair amount of this game on the ground. Yeah. Um, cause like once you get down to a planet, you'll see, you see right here, you can hit the, the right bumper and you basically drop, you land, you basically become a hover tank. Yep. And a lot of the gameplay on the planet is just that. Because if you're in the air, you can't really necessarily get a beat on anything. It's flying over the planet is more of a fast travel thing. Yeah. Uh, although you move pretty fast with a boost on the ground anyway. Yeah. Um, so so it is kind of like, it is sort of like Star Fox in the sense that like, you spend some time in the sky, you spend some time on the ground, you don't have to get out of your ship ever. But like... I've not found a case though where once you're on a planet, you kind of have that free roam. Like Star Fox, like Star Fox will have some levels even when you're on the planet where you can still free roam and do like 360 loops and mm -hmm. fly freely. It seems like everything, at least for me so far, everything that's happened once you break through the atmosphere and go down to the planet happens literally like right on the ground. Yeah, I mean you can do tricks and stuff like you can if you if you, do, you do a barrel roll. You can do barrel roll. I think you can do a little flip thing if you if you jump, which is like A button or X button or whatever or B. I guess what is it on the switch? It'd be B button. It's B. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bottom button. Yeah. If, you do that, if you do that, you jump and you can hold it and hover. So that's how you do the platforming. You're mm -hmm. hovering and jumping around or using a boost to jump off a ramp and land on stuff. And sometimes you got to drag items up there and activate stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's involved. It's there. And um, if, you do, if you jump and then use the boost in a direction, you can barrel roll or flip over and do stuff and get points for that. And, yeah. and there's actually... Uh, the, the pilot I use can get a skill that like re recharges her boost by doing tricks that way. So there's, there's actually a use for that in places. Um, yeah, it's 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 not a complex game, but it does have depth to it. I would say. Oh, it's really deep. I think. Um, I'm I like it a lot. I mean, I'm predisposed to liking it because I like starships and flying to planets and flying in space and shooting things with lasers. Um, and honestly, like, I mean, I'm playing on the Xbox because I wanted to play it at high resolution and all that stuff, but, like, I'm not a huge fan of sticking the weapons on the things because they look a little clunky and weird. I think the, we, we the R-Wing looks best. Like, like watching yeah. the, the footage right now, like, the, the lasers actually coming out of the R-Wing like that looks the best of anything in the game. We should actually go back, kind of rewind here and mention that this is a Toys to Life game. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of the toys here right now. Um, so we're going to show them off to you guys, and we're going to talk about the pricing and the cost for this stuff, and we'll get mm -hmm. into the more granular parts of the game after we're done with this. So, if you want to hold that. Mm -hmm. So this is how you buy the game. Let me try to make sure there's no glare on it so you can see if the lights are kind of bright on it there. And this pack is $75. Yep. And inside it, you get the game, and if you buy the Switch version, you get the R-Wing, mm -hmm. and then you get two pilots, which are basically Amiibo. You can see them here and here, and then you get weapons. Small Amiibo. Yeah. Yeah, like baby Amiibos, baby bows. <laughs> and that's $75 if you buy the hard version. Yeah, and it should be noted that, so this is the ship that comes with the Xbox and PS4 versions. And if you buy the Switch version, you get a digital version of this ship. Yeah. So you don't get the model in the box, but you get the R-Wing instead. But you do get, still get this same ship that you would get otherwise. So basically the R-Wing and Star, the Star Fox pilot figure are free. Yeah. It's the same price as the others, but you get another ship and you get Star Fox. Yep. And then you can also buy all this stuff separately. So here's the pilots, which are the, the Amiibo. And that is $7 a piece. For each Sounds, pilot. I think so. It's like seven nine, it my six ninety nine there. or seven ninety nine for a pilot, nine ninety nine for a weapon pack. And here is a weapon pack. The best weapon pack, in my opinion. So the game is like elemental. Yeah. Um, there's there's uh, ice, like rock, fire, rock, paper, scissors. It's like ice, fire, gravity, 
uh, kinetic, and then there's like permutations. So there's like one of the one of the weapons does fire damage, but another weapon does overheat damage, which basically sets up an enemy. If you overheat them, you can then hit them with another element, and it'll cause an effect. They'll right. do a lot of damage. So yep. the ice and the fire work together. It, like like the overheat the overheat. And then you hit them with the with the the, the ice weapon, and it causes a thermal shock that basically I mean, it, it outright kills most enemies. It's yeah. it's a very powerful trick to use, and it works with almost any combination of elements once you learn how it works. It's a, it's a very effective, and there's specific enemies that you're supposed to use this and that. But really, anything works. It's just a matter of killing something faster. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem to, it's not a gate gated thing. It's not a we're going to force you to use these toys thing. It's more of a how fast do you want to kill this thing thing. Yep. And then you could also buy ships. And here's a ship that Ubisoft sent me. And with each ship, you also get a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, in this and, package... And one weapon, I think. Is it one weapon? Yeah. It's yeah. A weapon. Yeah, there's a weapon there. Um, and this is $25. Mm -hmm. So you get a ship, a weapon, and a pilot for 25 You can buy the weapon and a pilot separately for... Uh, I think most of the pilots are only with the ship. Oh, true. You can't yeah. buy... Pilot? No, you can buy a pilot separately. You can buy a pilot separately, but like not him. Like that guy only oh, comes with he's that exclusive ship. to that package. Yeah, the, is what there's you're four. The four ships are exclusive. They have exclusive pilots and weapons, and then there's two exclusive ships to stores. So there's a GameStop, uh, GameSpot, GameStop. Stop. <laughs> there's a GameStop exclusive ship that's really just a repainted, re, you know, with different wings on it ship. But yeah. that comes with uh, I think Razor, who's also available separately. And then the target ship comes with Levi, who is also available separately. So there's only two pilots that you can... There's four pilots you can buy separately, and uh, the others all come with ships. Okay. Um, yeah, so each the weapons are 10 bucks. Each mm -hmm. pilot is 8 bucks, And then for $20, you can buy what's called the co-op pack, which allows you to buy an extra one of these things that clips onto... The controller. Mount. Yeah. It's a mount that mounts onto the controller, and it's specific to each platform, as you might have guessed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Matt, do you want to show off how easy it is to kind of snap stuff on and on and off? Yeah, there? like you got. I mean, you got the the guns here on the wings. And if you so you can so, wherever you put these on the ship is where they show yeah, up. Yeah, there's, the there's a nice like. So if you put this on backwards, it'll show up backwards in the game. And, and then your and ship will shoot, shoot backwards. backwards. It's yeah. useless, but it's it like is. a neat thing they did. <laughs> uh, you can also you can take the wings off. So you can take the wing off, and you can flip it upside down, and put it on. If you put that on like that in the game, it will sh it will look it like that. It looks like in the that game. in the game. Yeah. You can also, you can also. Uh, let's, I'll take the weapon off here, and let me grab another wing off this ship. You can put that there on the weapon port, and it, that will show up in the game like that. And it will add an attribute from this other ship to your usable yeah. ship. Yeah. So there's a ton of different modularity things you can do with this. It's pretty cool. You can also do all this stuff and without like going to a pause menu or anything. Yeah, you, you can, can all do it in real time off, if you want. Snap them on, and it appears in the game just like that. And then underneath is the pilot. That's where the pilot slots in here, and you just sort of put the ship over it. And that's actually a really cool trick because you can actually see the pilot through the canopies. And then in the game, you also see the then, pilot yeah, through the canopies. Your pilot, it all shows like whatever modulation mod modifications you make. Yeah, it shows all that. Uh, which is really and like there's lighting light piping effects so like when this when the controller's on you can see that like the, the back of the ship is lit up like an engine and yeah. stuff it's 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 really pretty cool like, it's it is really like toys to life yeah 2.0 2.0 and and i say a little further in that like so when you plug these things in you unlock them for a period of time in the game so like let's say so this is my ice weapon let's say i've swapped my ice weapon off and i've used another weapon but i need my ice weapon to open like a heat thing I can, if, if I don't want to do the Skylanders thing where I just constantly swap toys back and forth, I can just go into the menu, pick the, the other weapon I need, and swap back to it yeah. without swapping toys. So, yep. they, so they've streamlined that process tremendously. The other thing that that's good for is if you want to play co-op, because there is couch co-op, uh, if you've got a bunch of ships unlocked from you know, and you just want to use your ship, someone else can just, without using the mount, they can play digitally and use the sh stuff you've already unlocked for their, their yeah. controller. Once you unlock anything with a toy, it is permanently unlocked in the game. Yeah. It's so you a, don't really need to use the toys after but that. But you do. It's a lim I think it's a limited number of uses. Oh, really? So you have to put plug it back in periodically. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. I, I, I believe it's only a temporary unlock. Okay. Because otherwise you just bring the stuff to your friend's house right. and play it again and they right, wouldn't have to buy it. Right, right. I didn't think about that. The other thing I've noted is, um, so this is the Lance. Um, this is the, sh I, I, I collect a fair number of toys. 
this is the sharpest thing I have seen sold as a as a toy in America <laughs> in a very long time. It's like a time. knife. It's I mean it's 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 rounded. It's rounded to the point that like of, of it's like probably a legal. Thing. But yeah. yeah, but like if you if oh, I, I, I could punch through my hand with this thing. Oh, yeah. This is a sharp Kids knife. are going to take out of their kids' eyeballs So if with you're that buying thing. these things for your kids, be aware that the lance ship is a lethal weapon. Yeah, do like, not buy that for your kids. Be, like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, it is my favorite ship design in the whole Of game. course. <laughs> um, so that's why I got it. But like, when I got it, I was like a little shocked at how dangerous <laughs> this thing is. Yeah. Like, this is, I mean, that's an eye right there. That's yeah, an eye out. Absolutely. Boom. Because like, you know somebody's going to throw this. You know? Yeah. It's like a dart. Um... So, and yeah. I'm guessing people are probably watching this right now, and they're looking at this controller with this thing snapped on it, and they're like, I do not want to play a video game with that much yeah. weight on my controller. It's actually not that heavy. They it's did, not, yeah. It's actually got a nice heft to it. Yeah. It's just heavy enough that you feel it, but not that it's annoying. And it feels, it's safe. It's like, yeah, it's, it's not going to like flop it, off. It, or... it hooks on like, like with this little thing. It actually does plug into the bottom. Yeah. So you kind of like stick it in like that and then you lock it down and it's it's not going yeah. anywhere. And the Switch version works with the uh, Joy-Con grip. I, the other thing I would note, um, so the Switch and the Xbox One, this is all it is. Like you plug it in, you turn the controller on, you go. The PlayStation 4 version has a cord. You have to plug it into the PlayStation yeah. 4 console itself. There's a, there's a long cord yep. that plugs in. And, a, and I don't know why that is and these are wireless. I, I was told or speculated toward, someone speculated to me, that it was a Bluetooth thing. That Bluetooth Possible. doesn't support the connection, the communication that's required by the mount. Um, but just so you know, uh, just so you're aware, if you're thinking about getting the physical version and you're going to get it on PS4, it has to be plugged into the into the PlayStation. Yeah. Um, so that is, to me, a huge downside. Well, let's talk about another downside, and one that I think probably most people when they talk about this game are going to bring up, and that's mm -hmm. how this stuff is priced. So you can buy the digital version of this game. Can you buy, is there a $60? Yeah, yeah there's a $60 you can buy, version. The $60 version is basically the starter pack. Um, and then you can buy, the, I think it's the digital deluxe version. Yeah. That's $80. That comes with literally everything. Everything. Every, all, the entire opening wave of all the toys, all, all the ships, all the guns, all the pilots. Obviously, so you don't for, get the toys. You, you get don't get the, the toys. Content. You just get to use them in the game. Right. You, know, you just go to the menu and swap out whatever you want. Right. Um, so for twenty dollars, which is five dollars less than one ship, yeah. you can get everything yeah. digitally. Digitally. So, I mean, if unless you are just in love with the ship designs in this, or you really want to play with the, sh the ships, or your kids really want to play with the ships, the digital version is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, if you don't care about the toys or any of that stuff, and you don't have kids, and you just want to play it, because it is a game that adults yeah. can enjoy, buy the deluxe digital version. Um, because you get, here's the other thing about it. So you may say, well, I don't care. I don't want other ships. All I want is the R wing or whatever. Mm -hmm. The way the game works is when your ship dies or explodes or whatever, you have to bring in another ship that you have or it's game over. Well, Basically you, the ships are your extra lives. Well, it's not game over. You, you can respawn at the last whatever place you were, but you basically uh, you, it depends on what you've done. Like if you've taken down a chunk of the life off of a boss, that boss will have all its life back. You have to go, you go start back. all over. Yeah. Um, if you completed a stage of a quest, that stage will remain completed. But like, if you're in a hard fight against something and you die, it's either swap a ship or start over that start that fight over. Yeah. Um, Which may propel people to buy more ships. It's, and it's not like the game is. It's not. It's not a pushover. It's not easy. Like I have yet to fight a boss that I didn't die at least like two or three times fighting the boss. Mm. I haven't had that much trouble, but I have gotten down to nothing a couple of times during some, so, including just some fights that were just normal. I mean, if you're careless, your shield goes like that. Yeah. So um, it is not like an instant pushover, like for babies kind of well, game. Well, I think that people will see the toys. They're like, oh, it's a kid's game. Yeah, it's not it's a kid's not. game it's, at all. Yeah. I mean, it's not a kid's game any more than like Star Fox is. Right. You know, it's, 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 it's fun and it's accessible and it explains everything very well, uh, but it'll kill you if, you if you don't pay attention. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, that's why I think the co-op thing would be, if you're playing with kids, like, co-op is very important, I would say, to, yeah. to keep them sort of, you know, be, be their wingman and make sure that they know what Literally they're doing, they're they're helping them out. <laughs> um, 
And uh, so, so to me, like I haven't had a huge problem with like the extra lives thing, um, but it is handy just to have all the weaponry, like the weaponry to all the ele elemental effects being like right there is very useful. Well, each pilot um, also has a unique each, special yeah. attack. Yeah, each pilot, but, but I would say, I mean, the game is eminently completable with any of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is, at, I, mean, I would say that for most people, you would you pick your favorite pilot, look at their skills or whatever, and decide what you think is going to work for you the best. Pick your favorite ship, um, either in terms of performance and skills or in terms of how it looks, and you can just stick with those for the whole game. Like, and then what you're really Unless swapping you, out you the die. Well, you can always just bring them back or respawn. Like, you, it's not you don't ever have it. You have a little electrum penalty to to re, be alive again. Yeah, I mean, if you only have one ship, you're gonna have to perfect your play. Yeah, basically. you're gonna have to get through everything on one life. Yep, basically. Um, but like, it's not. It hasn't been that crazy to me. Once once it's you're, not impossible. It's not especially, a hard game. especially if you have weaponry. So yeah, to yeah. me, like, if you were gonna if you were gonna like say, I want to buy the toys, but I only want to spend the minimum amount. Pick your pick a pilot you like. Pick the ship you like, preferably that comes with that pilot. I yeah, mean, to yeah. be honest, uh, I've been using uh, Chase and her red ship, and I think she works great. I like speedy stuff that has a lot of like dodging ability, and that's that's her specialty, and it's her ship specialty, so that's working out real well for me. And then get an assortment of weaponry. Weaponry is the thing that you swap out the most. It's I've the most been, important. I've been sticking yeah. to my my core ship and my pilot uh, the whole time, and I have not been regretting that. Um, I also I should I also want to say that like I love the animation on the ships like the sh like oh, yeah. all the flaps are going all and the there's detail, retro rockets yeah. everywhere I uh -huh. mean they they put a ton of, of time and, and care into animating these things I mean I would probably say that this is like a uh, a more polished bigger budgeted No Man's Sky Well I don't know if it's bigger budgeted No Man's Sky costs That's a fair true. amount of money um, but it is. It's well, if you start thinking about the toys, it's way bigger budget. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, the, but like, pr yeah, production budget for sure yeah. in terms of like producing the actual physical item. But um, it also has cutscenes, which is. <laughs> no, it's just it's a it's like a triple A No Man's Sky. Yeah, well, it's, I wouldn't go that that's, far. That's it's toned it's, down. It's, it's, a, it's the take on the same thing. It's and much more easily digestible than No Man's Sky. But it's only Sky. one solar system. It's seven planets. Right. Um, like I said, much more easily yeah, digestible. But it's, it's like, not like overwhelming the way No Man's Sky can think, deal. Think about like, like imagine if some like mesh the No Man's Sky concept with Far Cry. Yeah. As an execution. Because it does basically use UB's open world template. And it yeah. is an open world game and it's always connected. Like when you boot mm -hmm. the game up, it connects and, and you're connected online while you play. But it is very much like a Ubisoft open world game. There's a huge open world. It's yeah. like MMO style quests. You go, go to this icon, complete this thing, get a thing for it. Like you know, and it will, will you know, will, you know, seven out of fifteen things discovered. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's 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 the formula mm -hmm. just applied to flying around in a spaceship in an open solar system. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Like if 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 you if you hate that, don't touch this one. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you like that. This might be the, this might be the No Man's Sky for you. And like No Man's Sky, you can just leave the planet and go up into space. Yep. And it's all seamless. And there's like um, stuff there's space up there battles too. up there. Yeah. Although I would argue they're probably the most boring part of the game. Yeah. There's dog not... fights in space only only hold an allure for so long. There's uh those they can be pretty tough though if you get an. Oh overhead. yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's like wreckage to explore, asteroid belts to explore. If you if you're hyperspacing back and forth, the outlaw faction will throw up these like these like nets to catch you and like if you have to steer for like the holes in them if you don't hit the hole like you get caught and pulled out of hyperspace and jumped by a bunch of bandit ships like there's a lot of stuff going on there is like, and there's like a there's like a hierarchy to the enemies so mm -hmm. you have like the rank and file enemies you're seeing in this footage and look this b-roll is from the very first parts of the game as always we want to make sure we don't spoil anything for you guys but after you get past this section of the game you start running into the more challenging enemies um, and they are called primes and they're kind of like the sub bosses of the mm. game, and you, if you defeat them, you, you they're kind of on a time limit. If you don't defeat them, or if you defeat one and you wait too long to defeat another one, a, a, the one will respawn to replace the one you already mm. killed. Um, and then out in space, there's these other enemies that are called dreadnoughts, and they are the ones that are actually spawning the primes. Mm. And so you need to go to space and take out these dreadnoughts. Have you done that yet? No. So. They're like these gigantic ships in space. And then after you kind of whittle them down to take them out, it's like a Star Wars trench run. You actually fly mm -hmm. inside and fly through a valley, deliver the shot, take off, and everything goes kaboom. 
Uh, so a little bit of Star Wars in there as well. Um, this game does feel like a bit of a mashup of everything. Yeah, I, th well, I'm, I get the impression that the, this, this was made by a team that was like, we want to put every space thing we love into this one, one game. Yeah. And so you've got that, you've got some Star Trek, you've got some Star Fox, you've got some Battlestar. You've, I mean, there's a lot happening here. Uh, a lot of homage. Yeah. And so I've been playing the Switch version, which has Star Fox. And uh, this game is better than any Star Fox game I've played probably since Star Fox 64. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. No, I, I mean, it's a little damning with faint praise, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely better than Zero. Yeah. No question. And I was shocked at how well... This is all Zero needed to be, It is, by the yeah, way. absolutely. And I was shocked at how well the Star Fox stuff was integrated. I really just thought it was like, oh, you're going to be able to play as Fox. Mm. And fly in the R-Wing. No, they, they're like... Those characters are integrated into the cutscenes. So Ubisoft made specific cutscenes mm -hmm. just for the Switch version that includes those characters. They're interwoven into the plot. There are five specific missions just for the Star Fox team where you yeah, go like, after... It's like two hours of Star Fox. Where you go after there. Wolf. Yeah. Um, and they've handled it with kids' gloves. Like, they've done a great job. I mean, in all honesty, Nintendo should probably just contract Ubisoft to make a Star Fox game. Like After this, I would, that, I would just give the Star Fox like series to these guys right that's what i'm saying like yeah. they already have a great rapport with ubisoft they obviously did you know mario plus rabbits which was a great game critically acclaimed sold really well this game based upon how much i've played of it so far is also a really good game and a better representation of star fox than the last star fox game and got no walkers from in nintendo it, sure. yeah <laughs> um I would, I would say, you know, if people, maybe if you have multiple consoles, I would definitely recommend the Switch version. It does not look as good as the other versions, particularly now that I've come over and seen Matt play the Xbox yeah. One X version. It does not look as good. Like, the environments are more barren. There aren't as many, like, cactuses and trees and rocks in the environments. And I'll the actually admit that, because I've played the PlayStation 4 and the, and the Xbox One X version... And when I started the Xbox One X version, there were a couple times when they'd show like the the enemies when they first showed up. Yeah. A couple times, like, oh, that's what that's supposed to be. Right. Like even on the PlayStation <laughs> Four, you can tell a difference on the Xbox One X. Like, well, I think a, a lot a sharpness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I'm sure when they were developing this, they kind of had to go lo lowest common denominator because they yeah. knew they were making a Switch yeah. version, and so it's, it's just scalability. That's it, all is, it is, yeah. But again, but like, it looks good, and it you runs get the good most value for your money from the Switch version. Yeah, because you get the extra, you get extra you get content, you get a free ship, you get a free pilot. Yeah, like, I mean, and there, it's a ship and a pilot that you really free. Yeah, want. it's <laughs> probably the most desirable <laughs> ship and pilot. Yeah. So if you have multiple platforms, I would definitely recommend the Switch version. It's a version that I'm playing right now. Um, I'm play I'm still gonna stick with the Xbox version, but I, I have the Switch version because like I figure like one day I'll want to play this again. And it will no longer be in print. Yeah. And I'll just open up the Switch version and play, play Star Fox. Yep. Uh, anything else that you want to add? Um, not really. I mean, I... I'm, Mission objectives are a little repetitive. A little bit. I mean, it's like, like a, I've, I'm hoping that that has gotten across by the comparison to the Ubisoft right. open world <laughs> formula. I mean... This is not Coming any. Off Assassin's yeah, Creed. You, you you know what you're getting into when you got buy an open open world game from Ubisoft. This is the same deal. Yeah. Um, if you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to enjoy it like from you know as long as you can tolerate it. And yeah. uh, if you don't, like it's not going to change your mind. Um, but I would say that like this, you know, this is kind of a passion project for the team that made it. Like the guy who made this is it was kind of a dream, and he he made it with like the idea of like the the crazy pipe dream would be to put Star Fox in it, and somehow UB made that happen. Yeah. And suddenly they're like, oh, we can do that. So they, so that's why how Star Fox got in, was they kind of made it with the idea of like, we're making a Star Fox game that isn't Star Fox, but it's a Star Fox game we want to play. And at some point, I guess just the, you know, UB's got that great relationship yeah. with Nintendo, and I guess at some point, some, some Eves must have brought it up to Miyamoto or something, be like, hey, by the way, look at this thing. Yeah. And they're like, oh, sure, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that's a great synergy, and I think, the, I think the team did a great job not just making this crazy, like, game that, like, you would think if you pitch it in a boardroom, like, the, the initial response from most companies would be like, who the fuck wants to play that? Well, also, like, the idea that this game exists is crazy, yeah. and then, like, that they did the job they did on the Star Fox content just for the Switch version is above and beyond. So I, you know, I encourage people to, to accept, even if you don't want the toys, like the digital version I think is very reasonable price. Because I was expecting the digital version stuff to be maybe five bucks less than the physical. I was expecting right. the ships to all be 20 bucks yeah, and like yeah. the pilots to be like five and be like, oh, right. so you get like a dollar off if you buy the digital version, but you're still going to spend like 300 bucks to get the whole thing. That's 20 bucks for everything. Yeah. That would, if you bought it physically would be 300. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, if you that's, don't want the toys, 
You want the, if you don't want the toys, Ubisoft has you covered. Yeah, like it, you're like, getting hooked up. Actually, it's about as good as, as you could expect from that. Like twenty yeah. bucks worth of digital content that would cost you three hundred in, in physical goods is um, a lot fairer than I ever expected that pricing to be. So, and honestly, if I'd known that they were pricing it like that ahead of time, I probably wouldn't order the physical toys. Yeah, but like. Here we are, yep. and then and then they were, and then they, they were already shipping from Amazon, and then they showed up, and I'm like, ooh, shiny, and I opened yeah. it. So I was like, it's too late. I'm the self control is out the window. Yeah, but um, I'm real happy with it. It's not gonna set the world on fire. It's not my game of the year or anything, but like yeah. I'm having a great time. I kind of wish it came out in like June. <laughs> yeah, like, it would have been a great. nice thing to have yeah, during the absolutely. summer. Absolutely, yeah. Because like right now, I'm like, I'm gonna play this for a few days, and then Red Dead's gonna come out, and I'm gonna forget that this is a thing. Yep, you're right. And but, I think that might be the case for a lot of people, or maybe a lot of people get this, particularly kids, for the holidays. Yeah, I'll come back to it. If if you have kids and they like Star Wars stuff or shooting stuff or little things like, uh, to me, this would be a godsend. It'd be something that they they sit with and play for a long time. Yep, and the controls are very intuitive, very tight. Yeah. They basically, when you're on the ground, it controls like a first-person shooter. Yep. You move with the left stick, you control your look and your aim with the right stick. And you can, there's a ton of options, for like, so you can like, you know, there's auto-leveling options, there's auto-aim options that go all the way the up. Auto, to, the aim assist is very generous. The aim, assi yeah, there's aim assist is, there's, <laughs> there's none, minimal, medium, and maximum. Yeah. And medium is like, you can be like 10 feet off the target and it's zooming yeah. in. So like you know, any skill level, you can adjust the the, the aim assist to, to make it playable for them. Uh, there's friendly fire on or off options, um, auto leveling in space so you don't get lost in the kind of the 3D axis thing. I mean, there's, it, they they thought of a lot. They they thought of everything basically. The big question is, should you, people buy it? You can you can even change, right now you can then. even change the temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius yeah. to Kelvin. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I actually change it to Fahrenheit. <laughs> I don't know why. So the big question is, should people buy this? Because like you said, Red Dead Redemption is coming out yep. in just, a, what is it, five, six days now? A week, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean... Assassin's Creed Odyssey is huge. A lot of people are working Creed. through that. Like I said, I think if you like what this is and you like what they've done, if you think this is a thing you want to support, I would buy it. I would yeah. buy it right now. Cause just, to, to, just to boost that early, at first week sales number for Yubi to look at this and say, oh, this is something people might want to want to do from more of. Um, and to reward the the guys who made this thing that was it was a real it feels like a real blood sweat and tears. Oh thing. yeah, um, story's lame. But story story is <laughs> story is like Netflix cartoon Voltron level. Yeah, basically. it's it's like there's some there's some stuff there. There's like if you do the side quests, you kind of flesh out some of the characters. Like I like some of the character backstories they have. Yeah, but it's uh, it's pretty tweeny. Yeah, I mean basically there's this group in space and the leader of the group gets kidnapped by aliens mm -hmm. and the whole quest is to get the leader back. Well, they're yeah, they're they're uh, they're from Earth mostly and they're basically like this guy made contact with the the, the alien in the in the water suit and. Uh, uh, instead of having sex with him and winning an Oscar, he uh, <laughs> he went to another. He developed a new technology that lets them warp to a system called the Atlas system in the Pleiades. So, Pleiades, it's a long way away. Yeah. Uh, I do appreciate that the 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 ship, the big ship, the mother ship you're on is called the Epsilon, mm -hmm. and it and looks can... it looks like a giant pizza cutter. And when it warps into the ship, into the into the Atlas system, it literally looks like it cuts a, a, a slice out of the, out of the space time continuum yeah. and jumps in. So it's like a sideways Enterprise. Yeah, but like you can it, even it upgrade look, the mothership too. Yeah, you can. There's yeah. tons of upgrades for you can upgrade mods for the ship and for the weapons and the pilots and skill trees for the pilots and skill trees for the ship, and um, you can upgrade everything else in the in the main mothership, which you can upgrade how many mod slots you have and how much you can carry. And I mean. You, you'd it's be playing really this game deep. a long time. You really if, you, if you want to, you, this could be your game for the rest of the year if you yep. if you don't like horse testicles. Yeah. <laughs> no horse testicles physics in this game, I yeah. promise. Yeah, I think I would recommend this game to anybody who liked No Man's Sky. But I think particularly to the people who maybe expected a more straightforward experience out of No Man's yeah. Sky and didn't get it. If you wanted like a more arcade, more curated experience out of, out of No Man's Sky. I think yeah. this will scratch that itch. It's Obviously, it's not a whole universe or anything, but it's that it's that feeling of going to a planet, exploring stuff, uncovering stuff, helping people in installations, scanning wildlife. It's all there. Yeah. It's all there in a more... Streamlined. In a more immediately gratifying sense. I would argue it's a lot more user-friendly, yes. too. Yeah. Yes. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's... You're right. This game should have come out at a different time. It's gonna get. I, mean, I, it's gonna I know get why Ubisoft did it because kids get all their stuff over the holidays. Yeah. And this game, I, I think they probably feel that the majority of sales are gonna come from kids or their parents. Mm -hmm. 
So I get why they would want to put it out at Christmas, but honestly, I think it would have done way better in Q1 of next year or this past summer. I don't know, summer. Q1's pretty packed, it is. too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, so maybe Ubisoft was like, well, we're screwed in either way. So. Yeah, I mean, the other option is, like, if you're, if you're mainly a Switch gamer, there's not really any other game in town. Yeah, yeah. Right I mean, now. yeah, if, you're, if you own a Switch and that's all you own... Buy it. Or if you prefer, like, you know... Because you still got some time this, to this wait could, for This is a very Smash. valid Switch Switch game for October if you're, if you're looking for something to play on that system. Absolutely. I mean, even if you start thinking about, like, the holidays in general for Switch, I mean, you got Smash and you got Pokemon. Pokemon. If you're not into either one of those, like, this, this might this, be the, this your big one. game for Q4. Yeah, because it's basically... I mean, it's Star Fox. It is, yeah. A good Star Fox. Yeah. Which we haven't got for a long time, so... Yeah, I think we give it a bump for Switch owners if, you, if you're a Switch owner who only owns a Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think under special conditions, you should buy it for PS4 or Xbox One. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I don't regret the Xbox One version. Yeah, it yeah, looks, it looks, looks great. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, uh, but I do think in, in, from a more objective point of view, if you don't care that much about how, how sharp the picture is, uh, the Switch version gives you more for your money. It's serviceable, too. It doesn't yeah, it look looks bad. Fine. Yeah. It looks, it looks and fine. it runs fine and, and all that. So there you go. Starlink. Go out and buy it, especially if you're a Switch owner. We're going to move on. We're going to talk next about games changing their names. Matt, you texted me the other day, and you were like, oh, they think that changing the name of this game is going to like suddenly make people want to play it. What was that game again? Uh, Raiders of the Broken Planet. That right. That changed their name to Star Lord. Star Lord. Like yeah. Or Star Lord. Yeah, I can't remember which I one. I don't think Star Lord because that's, that's copyright. Right, right. Comics. right Star Lord. But I think yeah. Star Lords is what they change it to. And it's like Raiders of the Broken Planet is a way better way name. Way better name. Guys, yeah. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't. And so this week... Because also remember that we just named Raiders of the Broken Planet three times and we are still aren't sure what your new name is. Exactly, so. that's a good point. <laughs> Oops. So in the vein of that, I think that's that... That's a actually, good game, by the way. Try it. Yeah, try it. If, you can rem- if you can remember what they called it, yeah. give it a try. It's yeah. free. And so that was like a month ago where they changed yeah. the name of that. And now this week, it, it's been leaked by a very reliable source. Space Lords. That's what it is. Space, Space Lords. Lords. Yeah. Good call. What were we calling it? Time Lords? Star, Star Lords. We're Star calling Lords. it Star Lords. <laughs> Look, Time Lord Lords plus space else. equals Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy now. Yeah. Like, you can't change it to anything lore. Come on, yeah. guys. Yeah. And so anyway, this week it, it leaked out from a very reliable source that Capcom is going to rework Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and or Whatever change. the next update was going to be. Right. They they're gonna, it's going to be a huge update, and they're going to change the name of the game to Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Better be one hell of an update. Yeah. How do you feel about this, Matt? For, well, first of all, do you think that just changing the name will have any effect on the game's performance? Mm, probably not. Um, the way, if you want to fix this game, you've got to completely change the art style. Like one of the, first off, you've got to completely change the art style. Uh, go to go to more of a cell shaded like Dragon Ball Fighters is Fighters Fighters is it fighter, it's Fighters not Fighter it's a Z. Z is it Fighter it's Z Fighters but is it Fighters or is it Fighter it's Z Fighters Fighters yeah so go to like something closer to that art style like or, or even just fall back to Marvel vs Capcom 3's art so just anything other than the weird thing the weird clay figure thing they went with for for Infinite. Um, and you got to bring the X Men back I think they I think actually in that report. X Men's already out. Out? Yeah, not gonna happen. That's weird. Like, I mean, they're getting the license back, so there shouldn't be an issue with uh, with promote. Because that's the thing is like they didn't want to promote the X Men and Fantastic Four because Fox had the the licensing right. the movie licenses and it didn't do them any good to promote. Not that they couldn't use them, but Marvel just would just decide not to use them. Um, but now they're coming home, so. Put Wolverine and Magneto and a Sentinel back in that damn, and Doctor Doom. Like that was the thing: is Fantastic Four and, and X Men annihilate pretty much most of the roster that people enjoyed from Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, you lose Magneto, you lose Doctor Doom, you lose Wolverine, Storm. Like that's that's two thirds of Justin Wong's yeah. team right there. <laughs> You're right. Um, so I would say if you wanted to re- rehabilitate this, and I don't know if that's, it feels like kind of a lost cause to me, but you would need because I think it plays fine. Um, but like, do you to, like the stone mechanic? Stone mechanic's fine. Like yeah, it's, it's it's okay. Like it's it's most fans don't like it. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. Like it, it's uh, it's it's usable. Like it, like they should rebalance some of it. Like the space stone is a little obvious, I guess I'd say. Um, 
But the big problems are uh, the big problems I think are the art style, the Definitely. roster, and the fact that it's two it's two fighters per team instead of three. Like I think they should roll it all back to the old style. Like three 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 team members. Uh, no, you know, get rid of the tag anywhere thing. Bring, make it the old tag system. Uh, bring the roster back up to snuff with the X Men in it, um, and make it look less like ass. Those would be my three uh, three <laughs> requests. How do you feel about Capcom doing this? I think it's too little, too late. I think. Yeah, the, you think they should just build a new game? They should like, just make a new game. Yeah. I mean, if they're gonna do like a full relaunch thing, and like here's Marvel vs. Capcom Four, and you can buy Marvel vs. Capcom Four is a totally different thing. Or if you bought Marvel, if you own Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, here's a free update that turns it into the game that doesn't suck. Yeah, like that would be like the way I'd go. I got a complete, so like a complete new launch of a new game, but also like an update that changes the Infinite because like we're sort of apologizing to you for what they did. Um, although that raises the question of like, are you erasing Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite from history? I mean, in, in which case. I mean, that raises a game preservation question, right? Like, even if no one liked it that much, does that, do, you, do you want to destroy it? I mean, forever? it's not at Evo. Right. I mean, and I don't even know if this rework's going to fix things because <coughs> Dragon Ball Fighters has become, like, the tag game of Evo now. Yeah. I mean, it was arguably the biggest hit of this past year's Evo. Well, it had the most uh, people that signed up for it, I think, to, yeah. to fight. It st didn't get the viewership that Street Fighter did. But for a game's first year at Evo, it did very, oh, sure. very well. I mean, I think... I don't see this game I think you've got out. a permanent new addition right. to the fighting That's game. That's what world. I'm saying. No yeah. question. So Marvel vs. Capcom's the underdog now. They got to... They gotta, not only do they got to earn back the respect, but they have to now compete with, you know, Bandai Namco's Dragon Ball game that did their own game better than them. They did, yeah. So uh, that'll be very interesting to me. Uh, if I were... Capcom, I wouldn't even want to have that fight at this point because we've lost Ono. Uh, you know, we, you, you're still kind of you know, Street Fighter Five is doing fine, but they're still trying to kind of rehabilitate it in some ways. It's still, you know, there's still a lot of skepticism surrounding Street Fighter Five and sort of the, the well, there's some the, parallels there the too because with thing. the arcade edition that just came out, I mean, they kind of did a pretty big overhaul of Street yeah. Fighter Five as well. It, but, that, and that worked for the most part. How do you think the pricing will work on something like this? Do you think if you own Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, it'll be a free download? Or do you think with them renaming it to Marvel vs. Capcom 4 that they're doing that so that they do not, they're not obligated to provide it for free to people who bought Infinite? Well, if, if, they do that, if that's the case, then this, that's not an update. That's a new game. Like... The only reason to couch this as an update with a name change is because you're giving it to the people that were dumb enough to buy your old game. Now remember, we haven't heard official word from Capcom yet. Right. We don't know how Capcom is going to couch this. We've just heard the leaks. So the person who leaked this has had has published tons of rumors in the past that have been accurate all around fighting games from Capcom, by the way. Apparently the guy has worked at Capcom in the past as well, so he has contacts there. So he, all he knows is that they're working with Infinite to fix it. But Capcom may not be too happy that people know that. Capcom may ultimately come out with the messaging of, no, this is just a, a new game. But the insider is already saying, no, they're actually just taking Infinite and doing work on that and then changing its name to a new name. I mean, we could have a, a, a case here where Capcom is trying to double dip on one of his projects and just giving it some cosmetic overhauls and saying, hey, here's a new game. Well, you know what that all, they did that for before? Marvel vs. Capcom 2. No, they did. There yeah. are only six new fighters in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Everything else is recycled from a previous game, right down to Morrigan, whose sprite was like eight years old yeah. at that point. Yeah, um, notorious. And that was widely considered the best and most successful Marvel vs. Capcom game. So, True. So just recycling stuff into a different format like, is not some kind of automatic kiss of death. Um, if they find a way to take the assets from this game and turn them into a new game and add some stuff and tweak some stuff so it's not annoying anymore, awesome. Like, whatever it takes. I like this series and I'd like to see it continue. Um, I honestly thought this was the end of it. Um, it sure seemed like it. In, in the sense that like Capcom's got enough to worry about in that space, and Marvel doesn't seem to have a lot of patience 
when it comes to video game licensing. Like, it's like, if it doesn't work, get out, you know, we're out. Later, like, yeah. You know, getting Marvel games made you know, on anything other than mobile has been a struggle for a long time, many years. I mean, there's a reason we were all so shocked that Insomniac was making a Spider-Man game. Yeah, like that absolutely. was just that was just not Marvel and by extension Disney's wheelhouse yeah. anymore. Like Disney doesn't have a lot of interest in main in core gaming stuff anymore. Kingdom Hearts is about it. It sure feels like Capcom just took the fanhood for this franchise for granted. They just assumed that it was just going to lap up whatever it put in the bowl. Well, look, the first time they showed this game and people reacted the way they did to the art style, that should have been back to the drawing board. Yeah. Like, if you don't like the way a fighting game looks, you're not going to want to play that fighting game. Oh, like, yeah. the art style of a fighting game is so important. It's more important than probably any other genre. Yeah. Like, except, I don't know, like, except maybe dance games or, MOBAs, or something. Maybe. Or like, I don't know. Anything yeah. that's character driven. Yeah. Like, like, I don't think it's a coincidence, but MOBAs have a, have a lot of overlap with fighting games in terms yeah. of, like, kind of the appeal and and the structure in terms of how you choose who you play. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, like, the instant people reacted the way they did to Chun-Li's face, and I know they did try to rework her a little bit, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Like, yeah. Chun-Li it, was the big red flag. Yeah. Well, I mean, Dante doesn't look good either. No. Like, Dante... I mean, I'd argue a lot of, the, probably half of the characters don't look good. A lot of it's, like, Captain America's got the weird armor and he's got no neck and, like, yeah. it's just, it, a lot of it didn't I'm surprised that well. Marvel signed off on a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, my guess is that the budget was not what it should have been, or so, or the time or something, maybe both, like, but the game feels like a weird rush job uh, that, you know, I got, I got, uh, Street Street Fighter Cross Tekken vibes off it. Yeah, frankly, absolutely. That's <laughs> which also felt like a very quick and dirty project yeah. that didn't have the, an A team behind it, and and just I, m I remember uh, talking to some of the Capcom guys when they came to demo that for for E3, and and uh, I was like, what about, what's the gem thing with the the, the and they're like. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you could tell that somewhere along the line people just gave up right like it was just like it is what it is here you go well then we never even got the inverse which was tekken cross street fighter from namco never like, happened. never, never i i think <laughs> i think akuma showing up in tekken is all we get yeah from that uh, that might be I, I mean they swear it's still in development but I know. that was that was what seven years ago wow and i think it has been that long yeah yeah i feel like that's not happening so here's the big question. Is this going to change the fortunes of the game at all, do you think? I mean, a lot of it's going to depend on how significant and well executed the update is. Yeah, but. I mean, I don't. I think that might not be the right question. The question is more, is it going to change the fortune of the brand, yeah. of, of the franchise? Right, right. Like, it's, you know, because Infinite's done. Like, Infinite is dead. Like, I'm not, to, not to disparage anyone who still likes to play it. I mean, go ahead. I mean, yeah. I, st I still play Dreamcast SNK games now and then. But, like... As a competitive game, it's gone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah absolutely. That's a no-brainer. Yeah. Even if Dragon Ball hadn't come out, I think Infinite would have been done by the, by Evo. Yeah, um, they probably would. Well, what else would they yeah. have found to put in there? Any number of things. They could have put uh, Blast Blue, maybe. Blaze Blue could have been in there. They could have brought uh, Mortal Kombat or uh, in, uh, uh, Injustice Two. Still going. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of stuff that had their finals on the. On Saturday, that they could they could put a Smash Brothers Melee. I mean, there's tons of stuff that happened on uh, was was Melee or four on, uh, finals on Sunday. Whatever the Smash Brothers that didn't happen on Sunday, it wasn't Melee. It, it was bra It was four. Yeah. Right? Wii U. You just move that to Sunday. Right. I mean, there's plenty of substitutes they could have done. Also, remember a lot. I think a lot of the finals are determined by sponsorship. Yep. And I'm sure. <laughs> so, to answer your own question, you just presented, mm -hmm. can this save the brand, the IP? I don't know. Like, it depends is what it, it is. Late? I mean, people are pretty burned over this game. Yeah, but it depends what it is. Like, it, it you know, we don't know enough to, to make that call yet. It's like, if, the, if they've revamped the art style and it looks more like a cl the classic Marvel vs. Capcom look, that could help a lot. If they come back and Wolverine and Magneto are back, like, you know, we'll, bringing back Wolverine, Magneto, and Doctor Doom and maybe Sentinel might be your, your biggest, like, ace in the hole. Yeah, that might get um, some people back on board. I mean, those are, those are just... I mean, taking those characters out of the game changes the way the meta works in a way that I just... It just doesn't feel like the same game anymore. Yeah. And I understand that's not Capcom's fault. That's a Marvel business decision. But, like, it might be time to reverse that decision if you want. I mean, who's it going to hurt? Who put Magneto back in this damn thing? Like, yeah. no, no one's going to go see Apocalypse. No one's going to go see Dark, Dark Phoenix uh, just because, it, like, X-Men were in here. Right. It's fine. No one wants <laughs> to see that freaking movie. Um, 
the, the, the Fox era of X-Men is ending, and it's time to kind of start reintegrating them into the mainstream like media crossover stuff, so this might be a good place to start, because I guarantee you, you bring those characters back, and it's going to start feeling more like Marvel to, to people who play these game, have been playing these games for years. It's certainly changed. would to me. Is changing a game's title ever going to reverse its fortunes? Um, it have to be. I think it would have to be a damn good title. Well, see, that's the thing. Is like I don't fully believe the rumor in that sense. It's because that's a weird thing to do. Like it is, yeah. and like to me, it sounds more like they're going to take the assets, rework them into a Marvel versus Capcom four, and perhaps offer an upgrade cheaper or for free to people who own Infinite because it's happening so soon. Yeah. Um, similar to what they did with Street Fighter V Arcade, um, which just updated automatically from anyone who owned the original Street Fighter yeah, yeah. V. Um, that would be kind of I, I, that would make sense because they're, t- they're taking that their own, a page out of their own book. Then you know they rehabilitate Street Fighter V that way. Maybe they think they can apply the same thing to Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, the Infinite title might just they might feel is just too damaged. Right. Um, but if you're gonna actually slap a four on this thing. That better look real different. Yeah, like it better be like <laughs> completely different. That's what I'm, and that's what I'm saying. I know, like they're talking about the X Men. If you call it four, and the X Men aren't back in this game, you've already lost. Yeah. As far as I'm, if you don't have Wolverine, Magneto, Storm, and and uh, uh, Doctor Doom back in this game, and you put a four on that thing, you can just go home. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, you've already lost. So taking all, taking this game out of the equation, though, do you think it's ever a smart tactic to change a game's title? After you've gone through a well-planned and executed, assuming it was well-planned and executed, marketing plan for, for the game and... Well, if you've done that, then you won't need to change the name. <laughs> well, there are lots of games that have great marketing programs but don't sell because the game ultimately mm-hmm. just isn't interesting or isn't good. Yeah, um, well, the name's not going to help that. I can't think of any real examples of that. Oh, there have been tons of games that have changed their titles. I did some quick research before oh, yeah. the show today. You got, you got paper there? Well, a lot of... No, I don't have, like, a list of them here. I think, but like, MM, some MMOs, I think, maybe. A lot that. of them were... Online it was stuff. called one thing in Europe and called another thing oh, in yeah. the U.S., things like that. Like Star Fox. Yeah, exactly. Lilat Wars. Lilat Wars. Yeah. I think we got the better title. I, yeah, I'd agree <laughs> with that one, definitely. Lilat Wars always sounded like someone fighting over soap. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I don't... <laughs> Because it sounds like good. lilac, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to see a situation where after you've promoted a game with a specific name for its entire development cycle and its release, yeah. where changing the name of that game would ever be a good idea. Well, um, not to drag it back to more you know, advertisements for, for beauty products, but um, <laughs> you never get a second chance to make a first impression. You, absolutely, yeah. And uh, that's more true in marketing than anything. Anywhere, yeah. So, uh, yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a hard turnaround to make. Uh, very few games, I think, have ever pulled it off. I, can't, I mean, the only things I can think of are really Street Fighter V had a nice, fine, a pretty good turnaround. It should have been unnecessary, yeah. but it, you know, they botched a lot of that. Um, trying to think of, I mean, I've, there are series that have turned it around with a nec- the next installment turned it around. I mean, you know, I think there's people that would say that that's what Devil May Cry is about to do. Yeah. Even though I like DMC. Yeah. Um, but for a lot of people, I think, you know, that, that's a, DMC V is going to be a comeback. Yeah. Um, the legacy is saying uh, Final Fantasy fourteen changes, Dan. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The, the, true. the the complete reworking. Yeah. Yep. And and they they pulled that off. That worked. That did. I mean, yeah. It's a good example. Yeah. It's it's, it's happened a lot. I mean, that actually is a case where it was successful. Yeah. Successful times are rare. I yeah. would say. I would I would guess that Space Lords is not going to be one of those times. I would also guess that if Capcom really is going to call it Cap Marvel vs. Capcom four. That it will absolutely not say that it's an update to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Yeah, it couldn't. I mean, It'll dispute the, the leak and the report and say, oh, that's all hogwash. We've built this brand new, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you could use the character data from... For, I mean, I, I'm sure you, from Infinite you could use you know, the all same the movesets. and everything, yeah. The same... Ca- I mean, don't throw the roster away. You can yeah. still, you know, you can still you have, have to Thor redo be the that. character models, the animation, Yeah, stuff he's got like to make that. it look better. And, like, oh, I mean... I the hope for me would be that they're really looking hard at how Dragon Ball Fighters kicked their ass at their own game in terms of look and in terms Literally of, of how it plays. Game. Yeah. <laughs> and like say like hey, bring it back. Like yeah. make this thing look like a comic book. Like that would be my my 
yeah, that's a lot of work. Well, I think it's but one like, of those cases where you had it right the first time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Take it. I would say take it and make it look like some some kind of middle ground between, uh, like a middle ground between Dragon Ball Fighters and like uh, that Spider Man, the Spider Man Into the Spider Verse animated movie that's coming out. Oh yeah. Like give it some kind of like a, a, a mix of like. That would be awesome. Like a more a more realistic looking cell shading almost. Yeah, I think that would be cool. We'll like, see. Yeah. Uh, anything's we'll hear, better than what the, what it looks like now. When so. do you think we'll hear anything official? I mean, everything's over for 2018 other than just all the big games coming out. Well, here come the Game Awards. TGS is done. Oh, you're right, actually. Keely, got him on the phone, Keely. No PSX. They yeah. probably they wouldn't show it at X18. No, probably. It would be like game. the Game Awards. Yeah, yeah, that's where it would That would be happen. the next, like, real opportunity. I don't yeah. know if they'd be... Interest about I, I, I bet Keely would like to run it. He absolutely would. Unless it looks like shit, in which case he might not want to. Well, he would still want to run it because... It's a premiere. It's a, it's a, it's a premiere. It's and if it looks... I would argue that if it looks really bad, it would probably get more interest and That's do more views point. than it would yeah. if it looked good. That's a good point. That is the society that we're living in right now. Yeah. Everybody wants to be able to piss on something. It's so funny. The hot takes would be huge. Yeah, exactly. That's true. It would generate more buzz, absolutely. And then you hope that and you Jeff get... Jeff knows that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you hope you get the pin action and all the stuff that's actually good in the show gets more views mm -hmm. because people are coming to look at the bad thing. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, if it doesn't happen at the Game Awards, who knows? I don't, you're probably looking at... I don't know. Sometime I don't even in, know sometime when in the be. spring. It, would, it could just be random at that point. Yeah. I mean, you'd pro I, I would expect to see it by the end of Q1 because... If it's you know, assuming it's real, uh, clearly you want that in Evo. Yeah. Which means it has to come out right. in time for it to qualify to yeah. be an Evo game, which would I think be March or April. That's true. So I, I wouldn't. It would have to be pretty soon, uh, geologically speaking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, on 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 the the timeline of like when we hear about things versus when they come out, I would think they'd have to get that out in the next six months or so. Yep. All right, let's move along. We're going to talk next about a topic that we've discussed on Game Face before. Um, and I didn't want to talk about it again without having more information and more insight to give you guys about it. We're going to talk about people who create cheat device, not devices, but cheat mods, I guess is what they... Yeah, like the like a cheat engine that yeah kind of thing. Like something yeah. essentially that you can install into a game that will give right. you a competitive advantage against someone else and the topic has come back up again because for whatever reason this week two big stories broke so a couple days ago uh, a youtuber look he looks to be about 14 or 15 years old was uh, sued by epic for creating like basically he's running a YouTube channel where he did gameplays of the cheat stuff that he was working on and, and he, that he was selling right? and he was pushing people to buy it and he was selling it mm -hmm. um, and then the second case happened today where take two was given the right to go and raid the homes of people that had created that crazy cheat for GTA online what was it called You'll um, have to be more specific. There was a cheat for GTA Online that literally let you do anything. Like, mm. you could, like, make people explode, like, <laughs> characters in the game explode. It gave you control over the entire game. And so Take-Two got the rights from the Australian government to go and raid the homes of the people who were built, who built and promoted wow. and sold. Australian law is a trip. Man. It is. It's interesting. Um, and so this actually generated, I mean, if you look at, the actual number of comments on a curated story this week, it was the most popular story, the one of the teenager uh, basically being uh, hassled by Epic. And so I wanted to talk about it again. But it, like I said earlier, I didn't want to just regurgitate the same stuff we said the last time. So what I did was I reached out to uh, a former, former lawyer at MTV that I used to work with for years. Um, she was our S&P lawyer, that's Standards and Practices. And literally, I talked to her every day when I worked there because it was just constantly either Game Trailers TV with Jeff Keighley had something in it that they wouldn't pass. And so I was the person who would talk to legal and try to figure out if what we're doing is fair use or if it's not fair use and if it's not, how we can make it fair use. And she's just really good. And I know she understands the law. She's not even at MTV anymore. She's moved, also moved on to a, another job. But she was very kind and very nice to go back and forth with me and then type out a pretty clear explanation. So... One of the things that a lot of people bring up is, 
and it is confusing and hard to understand, is whether something is a transformative work or not, and whether something infringes copyright or not. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, a cheat device isn't technically the same product, so it's a transformative work, which would cover it under fair use. I don't agree with that, and I'll get to what the lawyer says here in a minute. And then another, other people would say that, um, you know, it's just not right to prosecute a teenager, or some people think that you can't prosecute teenagers for, or you can't enforce, like, terms of service and copyright stuff on, on minors. Oh, minor. yeah. um, and so I asked her all that stuff, and I was like, look, you're the expert. You've been doing this your entire career. What do you think about this? And so bear with me a little bit. I'm going to basically just read the email that she sent to me and what she told me to read to you guys. Um, the relevant legal concepts are copyright, contract law, and, and computer fraud. In, or, I'm sorry, let me read it again. The relevant legal concepts are copyright, contract law, and the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. You are liable to be sued by the people affected for damages and or be prosecuted by the government for the felony under either or both laws. For a felony under either or both laws. Um, let's start here. I bought a game. No, you didn't. You bought a license to use the software in accordance with the terms of service, which is in, in brackets license, that you freely agreed to. All modern terms of service will not allow you to reverse engineer software. If you breach those terms of service, then you have broken a contract. That is what allows them to sue you. They will no doubt argue that the prevalence of cheat routines reduce the number of people willing to play the game, say 100,000 users at $10 a month times 12 months equals $12 million. They will also ask the court to impose punitive damages to discourage this sort of thing. Uh, which brings us to the copyright violation. You are allowed to copy their software provided you comply with the terms of service. But if you don't, you are in breach of the Copyright Act and subject to additional civil and criminal sanctions. And she goes on. Finally, the cheats, she has in quotation marks, access their servers in a way that the terms of service does not authorize. That is mm -hmm. the catch right there. This puts you in breach of the CFFA, which I don't even know what that means. Breaking this carries serious jail time penalties. Not to mention that in the US, a criminal conviction will preclude you from many jobs, including naturally, any with access to company computer systems. Putting aside the illegalities, <laughs> cheats are unethical and ruin the game experience for hundreds of thousands of people who don't use cheats. The first Google hit for CFFA is the California Fresh Fruit Association, <laughs> which I don't think is what we're no, that's after. that's not the right one. I don't know what, the C what CFA means, but I think she very clearly lays out, one, why publishers are able and willing to prosecute these cases and why hiding behind fair use or copyright is not something that you can do mm -hmm. in these cases with cheat software. What do you think, Matt? Uh, I think she's right. Yeah. Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. That's what it is. Oh. Um, I mean, that's what the, the contract says. That's what you sign to play the game. Don't cheat. Yeah. I saw some people say, well, as a loophole for terms of service, that, well, a lot of times you don't actually read the terms of service until after you've already purchased the game. Yeah, well, that doesn't matter, though. It doesn't matter. Because but... every time... I don't recall the last time I played an online multiplayer game that didn't also make me scroll through a thing that said accept the terms. Absolutely. Like, I mean, it's not just like you bought the game and it was implied in the manual or something. You always pretty much have to go through and, and accept some kind of legal agreement when you go on to use their servers. And it's like, th there is a, a legal thing where like, let's say in, in, let's say in Black Ops 4's like terms of service thing you have to sign to play it. There's a little line in there that says that they own your firstborn child. Right. Um, you would be able to go to court and have that thrown out because that is not a reasonable thing to expect to be in that. Yeah. All of this, however, is completely reasonable to expect to be in that. Yeah. And the only reason you're violating them and doing this cheat stuff is because you assume you aren't going to get caught. And you were. And you are. So there I, you I don't go. understand why people are still doing this. Well, I mean, I could, one look, of the you reasons... you want to do the cheat stuff and keep it to yourself... You could probably get away with it. Sure. But when you go on YouTube and you're like, hey, I created this hack 
and I'll sell it to you for 10 bucks. And here's what it all does. How could you ever think that you're not going to fall on the radar? Well, because he's a kid and he didn't understand what he hit yes for. That's all. I mean, he didn't, he didn't know any of that was in there. That's I don't what, think any of us know that anything is in terms of service. Because we, well, we scroll past it and we just You don't know for sure, and, but you know that's in there. I mean, yeah. is anything she's saying there surprising to you? No, not it at all. It shouldn't be. No, I've been like, working with I worked with her for seven years. So I, well, know I don't care about how long you worked with her. I mean, like, yeah. that's what you, that's what the terms of service sense. these things are. Yeah. It's, like, <laughs> it's common sense. Yeah. Like, and so, you know, the, I'm sure his, def, his defense lawyer is basically saying, like, oh, you can't expect a 16-year-old or whatever to know that this is how this all works. It's like... Well, ignorance of the law does not, not get you off the hook. Excuse, you know? yeah. Just because you didn't know the speed limit was 50 doesn't mean that you get off for going 65. Yeah. You know, it's um, you know, I, I feel like he's not going to end up having to pay them 12 million dollars. But oh, no, like, that was just an example she yeah. used. Yeah. But like the, the this is the, the this is basically a, a precedent thing. Or it's not a precedent thing because the law is well understood yeah. outside of entertainment software. I mean, there's nothing revolutionary here. The reason they're doing this, I think, is to basically say, hey, this will happen to you if you try to do this. Um, and they might just be trying to stop the whole thing about you know, publicizing the cheats and trying to sell them and profit off them to people. I mean, you're never going to be able to stamp out cheaters for, for everything yeah. for good. But like, you know, enacting your own terms of service that people agree to to play your game is not some kind of crazy, irrational thing or some kind of monstrous behavior. It's just like... They they don't they want to nip this in the bud because it could very seriously affect their very lucrative game if it got widespread enough. I think the most powerful sentence in what she wrote was, "Let's start here. I bought a game. No, you didn't. Yeah, you bought a license to use the software in accordance with the terms of service that you freely agreed to." Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people get mixed up. They're like, "But I bought that game. I right. own it." I can do whatever I want with it. That is not right. how like, it works. I bought this this ship. If I want to rip this ship apart or set it on fire, I can do that. Yeah. But what I can't do is reverse engineer the tech they use on this and use it to do my own thing. And that's exactly what they're doing with the cheat software. And they're go reverse... on YouTube and brag about it and try to sell you a new weapon for a Starlink ship. Right. That's like, how that's they not, yeah. that's how they figure out how the cheats work. They revert they literally reverse engineer the yeah. code to find the holes where they can go in and manipulate the code. Yeah. And this happens all the time. I mean, if you want to do that on a single player game, I say go for it. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, like, but once you get in the multiplayer world, especially in the high stakes world of Fortnite, yeah. um, <laughs> and I mean high stakes in the sense that Epic's making a ton of money on that game and they would like to continue making a ton of money on the game for as long as humanly possible, yeah. um, you're stepping in some scary legal territory. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about them going i mean it does seem like a lot of the offenders are 12 to 18 years old how do you feel about going after minors like that um i don't know like i i that i think i mean look the legality know, on that is kind of kind of very can vary from state to it state does or country to state country to or whatever it does yeah it's, it's probably whether you can prosecute or probably not. a reason they're going after him in australia um, there probably is yeah but like I mean, it, it, he's never going to forget it. <laughs> for I mean, sure. look, the kid knows it's wrong. Yeah. He knows it's wrong. He knows he's creating a cheat that people are going to buy so that they can get better at a game without actually getting better at a game. Mm -hmm. And he also knows that when other players realize that someone else is cheating, that their drive to play that game is going to lessen a bit. And if they encounter it consistently, they're eventually going to stop playing the game. Um, so... You know, like you were saying earlier, ignorance or whatever. Like, I don't think there is any ignorance in this case. I think... Well, I think he's ignorant of, like, the penalties that could... I mean, I, did he know that what he was doing was a felony? Probably not. Did he know what he was doing was wrong? Sure. I mean, look, this did. isn't the first I mean, person cheating. Epic's gone after. I mean, mm. he... You you Even you though never the, think I didn't know it was a felony thing, I am about 50-50 on. I'm, I didn't know it was a felony. I mean, I, I didn't know that was what the penalty, penalty would be. When you start talking about the dollars, that's where you get into felony territory. Well, felony is, is that's a classification of, of crime, that not necessarily dollar amount, but it's like you know, misdemeanor versus felony is just sort of severity. When you're talking about financial crimes, it is based on dollar amount, eh, though. But like the dollar amount's being essentially plucked out of midair for this. So... Um, Maybe they've turned it into a felony, but like, like she's talking about violating this part of this contract is a felony by default. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure he, this kid, didn't know that much about that situation. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I mean, what I mean. He definitely didn't know a lot of the stuff that she wrote in here. Right. Because she's a lawyer and she's been doing it for eight years. But like, um, 
Yeah, you, you say like he knew it was wrong. Of course he knew it was wrong. I mean, it's called cheating. Right. I mean, I'm sure he even called it cheat, right? Cheats or hack, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Like, it, it just comes, it kind of comes down to just like if you play with fire, you get burned. Like, if you didn't want the house to burn down, don't play with matches. I, I saw a lot of people trying to defend the kid on Sifted, saying that they shouldn't be going after this guy, the kid. And how do you feel about that? Can you just let people keep doing it? I mean, how What's do you set op- an example? I mean, either, either that or you go after his parents. One Which is other. what happens a lot of the times. Yeah. If it gets to the, it, depending on the state or the country that the person lives in, I mean, at that point, you may have to go after the parents. Yeah, I mean, what's the, what's the difference at that point? Like, you're still taking all the money away from them or doing whatever, you're disrupting their lives and still doing the same thing. Probably making the parents a lot angrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, uh, I mean, what, other, otherwise you're basically saying that, like, minors are immune to crime prosecution like yeah. that doesn't make any sense like the only reason i mean if the kid had robbed a store no one would be like complaining about right. it but it's like it's because it's like a digital crime that people feel like oh there's no real victim to it or whatever and then like, man, there's a major corporation that's the one that's trying to trying to shut down the process it's like it's like you know has some people just don't feel bad if somebody shoplifts from walmart yeah you know? well you wonder too if a lot of the people defending people like this aren't using cheats and hacks some, I mean, that could be. I mean, I, th- I think a lot of people just by default root against successful companies. Yeah, that that does happen. It's like Schadenfreude or whatever. I also think that, like, you know, a lot of people generally, I think people try to defend things that they know that they're participating in. Yeah, or that they like maybe could see have seen them themselves doing that having when done, they were you know, that age. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I would have. Like, I'm just cheating in multiplayer is not a thing that really cheating in general. I just don't understand where people get any. Look, every once in a while, I use the infinite money hack on an RPG I'm playing, where I'm just like, I don't want to grind for that much gold to buy this damn sword. Right, you know? right. But like, I don't. I wouldn't. It, it wouldn't. You're not affecting anyone else, though. Right. It, it would never. I have never cheated in a game where I was in competition with other people. Right. Like, it's just not a. That's not the spirit of the of the thing. I feel like you get a lot of. Uh, the, for instance, like a lot of the people who push back on pirates getting arrested. Mm. I mean, I'm guessing probably a lot of those people are pirating software or whatever. Yeah. Or there's just, I don't know. And I'm sure there's some people who really don't think... There's anything wrong with there's it. There's anything wrong with it, yeah. They just think like, they should get everything for they're free. Just, they're just owning fools yeah. online. And that's, you know, to them it's just for the lulls and... Why should that? Oh, you're talking about people who are playing cheats. Yeah, using I'm just cheats. Like, why yeah. should that be of any have any consequences in the real world ever? Well, that, to me, those people are just self-centered and narcissistic because well, yes. all they care about is themselves. Well, yes, but they don't think about the impact on the other players or the company who spent a ton of money to develop it and is spending a ton of money to keep all the servers up and oh, going. Yeah, but you're still describing a fair chunk of humanity. <laughs> but sadly, <laughs> no, sadly, yeah. it's, that is true. I mean. A lot of people only care about themselves. That's really they may give other people lip service, but when the rubber hits the road and you mm-hmm. see their true character, you're right. A lot of people only care and about that's themselves. That's why laws like this exist in some in some form are often to make sure that they do. Like you still haven't answered my question on whether the kids should like go to jail or whatever. How well, you I don't know what the it. penalty is for this. Like uh, usually, I don't know if jail time is the penalty for this. It's more usually more fun. I, I read that um, if convicted, if you're an adult, you, it was like five years in prison. Hmm. I don't know. Which would probably ultimately mean like 10 months in prison and then five years of probation. Or yeah, whatever, I mean, the but... judge would, would, I mean, I, I assume, I, mean, I don't know Australian law, but like I assume the judge would modify the sentence based on what he thought, based on the kid's The kid also would go to prison, I'm guessing. He would go to, go to uh, some kind of juvenile detention center. center yeah. Or so, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know the kid. I haven't seen how he's behaved. I don't see, you know, a lot of times it's, it, you know, in that situation, if the kid shows that he knows he did something wrong and indicates that he's not going to do it again, you can lighten things up a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know what Epic's plan is because Epic clearly just wants to make an example out of him. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, I guess really the someone's bigger question got, is... Someone's got to be the first one to do prison time for, for online hacking. Well, it's a white... Online cheats. It's a white-collar crime. Yeah. And so people always are like, oh, should people go to prison for, like, embezzling money from their company or skimming or whatever How people about this? do? If, if the guy who organized the fire Festival can go to prison for six years for that, 
this kid could do six months. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually a really good point. That's a, that's how six months is how long that Brock Turner guy went to jail for raping that girl. So yeah, uh, he could. Do, <laughs> well, I, in that sen- context, sen- maybe sen- he shouldn't sen- go to jail. Sentences mean nothing. They at really this point. are. Yeah, you're so, right. You're right. The, the, so the, the, lo- the the actual lesson from that comparison, by the way, is do not steal money from rich white people. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's what happened with the fire festival. Yeah, and Epic's rich. Yeah. And they got the money to make him pay. So yeah. that's probably what's going to happen. Yep. And I don't know. I mean, early on in this story's development, like a long time ago, I remember we were thinking like, oh, Epic's going to try to make an example, but they're not going to. Like, like, Epic has gone in hard on this in a way I really didn't expect them to. So like, like my, my instinct t- can tend to be like, oh. Don't forget oh, Take-Two. We, oh, know, Take-Two. And, too, yeah. they'll, but they'll like, you know, oh, they'll back off of this. Or they want, but, but you know what? I'm thinking they might not. They yeah. might really like, ask for like maximum sentencing and it'll be up to the judge based on what he thinks the kid deserves or how the kid has behaved during the trial to hand down the sentence he, he feels or is fair. Or if he had prior problems with Yeah, I mean, whatever, who knows yeah. what, a, what his record, a record is or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's how the system works. I mean, you gotta remember too, as taxpayers, we pay to keep these people in prison. Yeah. So are you cool with your taxpayer money going to keeping someone like that in jail? I don't know, I don't pay taxes in Australia. No, I'm saying if it happened in California, as a taxpayer, would you be okay with someone going to jail and you paying for them to stay there for however long? Yeah. Sure. I don't know. Like, it's not really up to me. Because, you know, a big thing right now is a lot of people feel like drug offenders shouldn't be in prison. Mm-hmm. Unless, obviously, if you inject somebody and they die or something <laughs> like that, you should be in prison. That's murder. Yeah, that's but not they're a saying, drug offense at that But point. they're saying <laughs> people who sell, like, marijuana and everything, like, they should just let them all out of prison because we're, they're not violent offenders and we're all paying, ton, like, mm-hmm. literally, like, forty to $50,000 a year per person for them to be in prison. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are like, just get, let them out. Well, like, that's a two-parter for me, then. Part one... One of the reasons they keep saying that about marijuana offenders is because marijuana is legal in a lot of states. Right. Uh, this is not legal no, in any a, that's states. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, and second, if we start packing the prisons with t- 16-year-old Fortnite cheaters, um, then I might say, like, hey, maybe we should ease up on our string- stringent Fortnite laws. Um, but at this point, like... That's kind of an argument for why they should prosecute these people, though, because it becomes a deterrent to other people. Mm-hmm. The problem is a lot of times these stories don't get out into the mainstream, and so how much of a deterrent is it really if people right. have never heard but about I, it? But I think at the, you know, the flip side of that coin is if you send this kid to jail for five years for cheating in a video game, that'll make the news cycle. Yeah, it will. And yeah. that might be what Take Two's after on this. It might be what they need. It might be what the industry needs. I hate to say it, but there might just have to be that one person that really just gets the screws put to them. I think I may have mentioned this before, uh, like when I used to live in Philadelphia and I used to write graffiti, I'll admit that I wrote graffiti and I'm not proud of it. I'm proud of some of the stuff I did, but uh, I'm not proud street of art, street art. Not proud of the vandalism side of it. But anyway, mm. I kind of ran in, in this circle of graffiti writers and there were some guys who had been doing it literally in Philadelphia for like 20 or 30 years. And Philadelphia got fed up with, all the, with the graffiti problem and it was a really bad problem. And it started basically passing the zero tol- tolerance law where if you got caught the first time, you went to jail for three months and then it just kept doubling every time you got caught. And this guy who was basically the biggest writer in Philadelphia, he wrote, his name was Credit. He was an accountant, which is very, very clever. Um, he was literally the biggest graffiti artist in Philadelphia. Like he would put up stuff that was like 30 feet high on the side mm-hmm. of the highway on the side of a building like everybody knew credit and how do they do that they used like like template stuff or like how do you like just freehand it yeah like they're just that good uh, when you said how do they do that i thought you're gonna ask me like how do they get there no i mean like like you see like graffiti and and not like just tagging stuff but you see like the art the big pieces, on what, yeah. where like the burners where yeah. i mean just it looks like perfect lines and everything i mean it's, it's like just all them it's just they're just that good yep but they do it a lot, though. Mm. Like, they'll put up the same piece a lot. They'll do different colors or whatever, but they'll get very good at their throw-ups or if they do, like, big... Like, Credit literally would take paint rollers with him. Like, he would use paint rollers to fill in, like... <laughs> I'm not kidding. The, and, uh, the, well, the, the chat's just reacting to your, your hardcore street past. Uh, you live illegal, in Philadelphia. Illegal street racing, graffiti, skateboarding... <laughs> You live in Philadelphia and you kind of <laughs> hang around like the, the counter subculture there. You kind of get sucked into a lot of this stuff. And I knew graffiti writers for a really long time before I ever did it. 
And uh, I kept fighting, oh, I don't want to do it. And once I did it once, it's very, very addicting, the rush that you get, because you're just petrified while you're doing it. But anyway, they made an example out of credit. He got <laughs> caught. He was riding in the snow, and they found his tracks, and they just followed him from spot to spot until they caught up with him. That's, and they, that's rookie shit right there. They put him, I mean, when it's snow. You got to double back. Do? Yeah, I guess so. Um, and they gave him a five-year prison sentence. Wow. Yeah. And, and I quit immediately i never wrote again i was done like so it worked on me like yeah, and now now your father shane right exactly <laughs> but quite a turnaround so it, do, it does work like literally me and my little crew of friends we all quit writing immediately we're like oh i'm done with that like if you can get caught once and go to jail for five years it's, it's not worth it mm. of course a lot of people didn't like the hardcore people who've been doing it all along were like oh i'm not gonna stop well, people but, for whom it's like a lifestyle right yeah. for us like the fringe people who are like wow it's a rush and mm -hmm stuff like that like we were done like we were we quit so you can impose sentences punitive sentences that will deter people from behavior it worked on me i never wrote again after that and it was like a thing for me for like two years where like two or three nights a week me and my boys at two in the morning would get our cans and we'd go out and walk around and and do it so i like to picture some like philadelphia detective like watching this just be like i got him now <laughs> Oh, it was insane for a while. And it was, it was for He's been goodness. trying to crack the case for 20 years, yeah. and he, he just broke it wide open. He's I on his way here right now. I didn't tell anybody what I wrote, so they, they can't pin it on me. Oh, they knew. They <laughs> knew. They knew it was you. They just couldn't prove it, and now they got you. I actually have shared what I wrote, what my, my writing name was before. I'm not going to share it right now, though. But, um, but yeah, it worked on me. So I can see where these deterrents, and it's it, it, video games, graffiti, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's all about, well... Well, seeing somebody else get punished convince you to change your behavior, and it absolutely will. But you have to, well, know. especially if it's at over the top. Five right. years for graffiti is but you amazing. Have, well, but here's the thing: he was credit, and if you lived in Philadelphia, everybody knew him mm -hmm. because I mean, you couldn't drive anywhere without seeing his name everywhere. Like you drive down 95, and he just had bombed every building, and so they had been looking for this guy for a mm -hmm. really long time. And they caught him, like, red-handed, and they just it'd threw be, the book It'd be out. like putting Tony Hawk in jail if skateboarding had, in Ex fact, been a crime. Well, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so it, it can work as a deterrent to change people's behavior. And so to answer my own question that I asked you, I am okay with them sort of throwing the book at these kids. Mm -hmm. the, the, the X factor is how do you make sure that the other people that are doing it know? Because right. we knew because everybody knew credit and it was a huge story all across like the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Philly Daily News and right. it was on the news channels because everybody knew who credit was. And they're like, they finally caught credit and everyone was like, oh my gosh, credit? And it turned out he was an accountant, which is so freaking awesome. But Is that why his name was credit? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew the whole time, and then he gets caught, and it turns out you he You thought was, he just wanted everyone to know who he was. To give me credit, and yeah, yeah, and it turns mm -hmm. out that he was an accountant, so... And he was old. He was, like, in his 40s, mm. 50s, and uh, he had been doing it Is since... Is that, like, like, how, like, that, like there's that, those theories that Banksy is, like, a 50-year-old woman? Yeah. Well, like everyone that. knows who Banksy is. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that a thing now? Yeah, people know who he is. But it was speculation for a long time. Though. Yeah, yeah, for you... Well, he was a graffiti writer at first, so... Mm. That that whole scene is all about secrecy and. Oh, I know. I mean, you know, I used to work for a guy who was super into that stuff. So. But see, he got to the point where he's like, "They're not going to arrest me because I'm Banksy." He he had become a legitimized. <laughs> and somewhere credits like. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> Banksy was good though. Like credit, yeah. oddly, was not that great. He was really ballsy and would put stuff mm. up in, and like he would take grapple hooks and like climb up signs and like. He was very dedicated and ballsy. He wasn't like the best writer, but everybody knew who he was. Mm. And so that's, to me, that's the X factor. You, ha you have to make sure that the message gets out there because you don't want to keep doing this. Like you don't want to keep arresting and putting tweens in jail mm. or in juvenile detention centers. That, that's not a good result. And that's not something that I would want to see, but I do support initial strong punishment to get the word out. And hopefully sites like Sifted and IGN and all these websites report on it so that the kids know about it and they know the risks and ultimately if they're smart and they have the ability to use reason they will stop the behavior and with youtube and everything like there's really no excuse for that anymore so mm -hmm. 
Um, I think I'm just as a, someone who comes from a family of lawyers, uh, I'm hesitant to speculate on what someone deserves or doesn't deserve sure. without knowing all the facts of the case. Sure. Because these things just vary by on a, literally on a case to case basis. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know Australian law when it comes to this kind of thing, um, but it'll be interesting to see what it turns out to be. Because because uh, you got to wonder if there's the other thing in a situation like this, and that's one of the reasons we maybe haven't had a landmark case in this arena so far. Trying to explain just the nature of this crime to a judge yeah. is going to be a tough battle. The other problem, too, is that the laws have not kept up with technology. Yeah. So they're using laws that applied to radio to try to enforce in the digital age, and mm -hmm. that doesn't work. It's. I mean, the, it's not, the, the contract law is pretty straightforward. It's just you have to convince the judge that this is a binding thing that everyone who plays this game enters into uh, knowingly and willingly. Yeah. And that they knew this was wrong. I don't think that's a hard thing to prove, but then you have to further make your case that they deserve this kind of maximum level punishment for such an intangible thing. Yeah. Um, it's hard for an 80-year-old dude to comprehend. Yeah, or a 50-year-old, for right. that matter. Yeah. I mean, this, this is not a world that most people over 30 are really familiar with. Well, I think with. if you've watched any of like the uh, Congress hearings when like Facebook goes in or whatever... Yeah. It's really sad. Like where they're asking Zuckerberg, like how the sh how the Facebook makes money if it's free. Yeah, and he's like, uh, I mean, Zuckerberg doesn't come off too well for, for, to me most of the time. But like that, I when he's like, we run ads, Senator, and just sort of grinned at him. I'm like, yeah, I'll give you that one. It just Mark. shows you how to it's, touch. It's, a, it's like, and it's like, is that's not any kind of a new system? Like that is how television and radio have worked since before even that senator was probably born. Yep. And Maybe not television. Not, he could not draw the lines and no. connect the dots. <laughs> and That's like, a problem. That and is you a know problem. that was in some brief, you know, they've got a fleet of 20-something interns and aides that are trying to explain this stuff to them and give them write-ups on it, and they're just not. It's just Those not people run our country, man. It's yeah. scary. Well, I mean, I don't know. if Maybe it's better in Australia? I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. We need age limits on our Congress, I'll tell you that much. Especially with the way our world, how quickly At the very changed. least, in terms of some of these tech issues... You yeah. got to bring in some people that have touched one of them. At least <laughs> have like an that. idea yeah. of what you're talking about. It's really crazy. So, I don't know. I know that may be an unpopular opinion, but I think, honestly, they, they're going to have to make an example out of someone to save a lot of other people on down the road. Because if mm -hmm. you don't do that, people are just going to keep doing it. And we're going to end up with, like, thousands of tweens in prison that we're paying to keep in prison. And that's not a good result for anyone. So... It, that's just the way life works, unfortunately. One person yeah. ends up being like the martyr for a bunch of others. and This has been scared straight with Shane Satterfield. <laughs> I don't know about that. I just talked about <laughs> writing graffiti for two years. So, All right, let's move on. We're going to talk about Call of Duty Black Ops 4, undoubtedly the biggest release uh, from the last few days. It came out on Friday, which I wasn't even aware that it was coming out on Friday. I thought it was coming out on Tuesday, but it's actually been out now for the entire weekend. Um Nobody got review code for this early. We all got mm. code the night before because it's all online. Yeah, it didn't go live. And the we... servers weren't lit up until like the day before release. So everybody got the game. I got it at like 9, p 9 p.m. the night before. And uh, then the game launched at like three hours later or whatever. So um, not a ton of reviews out for Black Ops 4. Although Game Informer curiously posted their review like the same day. Mm. I don't know if they just use like what they have played as a beta i mean they are a magazine so yeah but it's an online game so maybe they went in and hung out with treyarch for a few days and played on treyarch's internal network i don't know i was surprised to see that review up so quickly though uh, but there's a couple out there now some of them are tackling this game in like parts like i think ign reviewed just like the zombies mode or something i don't know it's, it's been it's been a smattering of opinions on this game um, I'm still trying to truck through Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so I haven't given this game as much time as I probably wanted to, but I did play the holy living crap out of the beta. And uh, the beta, I did play the final version long enough to kind of check and see if there were big changes from the beta to the final release as far as the multiplayer stuff and Blackout, which is the Battle Royale mm -hmm. mode, uh, which I already played a ton of because it was, those were both a part of the beta. So I don't want to concentrate too much on those two parts of the game, uh, the competitive multiplayer and Blackout Battle Royale. I want to talk about the elements that we have not covered on Game Face, and that is the single-player content. There is single-player content in this. 
Ooh. And they come in the form of... What a twist. Yeah, they come in the form of operator stories. And I, I don't know. Calling it single-player content might be a bit of a stretch. And here we're starting to, to see it here. So each of the ten operators in the game have... Who owns a white trench coat? I know. Like, that's a... That is, that is some impressionistic <laughs> nonsense right ah. there. So each operator has their own section of single player. I don't, it's not a campaign. So essentially what you do is you start playing with an operator. You see these elaborate CG cinema sequences. And then you actually go into the meat of it for each operator. And what it does is it's, a, it's like a tutorial for each operator to teach you how to use their special abilities mm. and their gear. And See, we have characters. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. And these, by the way, these cinemas are awful. They're terrible. They're insensitive. In fact, this whole game is kind of tone deaf. Like in the, um, in the zombies mode, there's an Asian character and he does like the whole pronouncing L's as R's thing, mm -hmm. like as a joke. And it's just like every line he delivers is like... Is it a joke or is that the voice actor? No, it's, yeah, it's... Because that doesn't seem like a thing that would get through it legal did. in... It, it did, yeah. You it, sure it's not just it, how the guy, it's not like Ken Watanabe or something? No, absolutely not. No, mm. it is, it's a joke. It's like they, they intentionally use tons of words with L's so that he has to say them, basically. Um, and these cinemas are terrible. Like, they're really poorly written, and the voice acting is really hokey, but they try to tackle really serious topics like PTSD or, like, a father dying and leaving his family behind. But they're all done, like, it's just, it just really comes off as disrespectful and just overall bad. But they are pretty good tutorials for getting your head around each of the operators. Hmm. Um, so after you watch the cinema, Evangeline Lilly is in this game. Yeah, wow. I don't. She must be that trillionaire person. Maybe. So you watch a cinema. This supposed to set something up, which it really doesn't. And then you go and you play through a tutorial that teaches you how to use all the gear. And then after you go through the tutorial, you play a, a match with that character against bots. Hmm. So it's basically like. All in all, between the cinema, the training section, and the match, it, each one probably lasts like 10 minutes. So, is 10... Masaki, is that the guy's name? Ta uh, Takeo Masaki? I don't know. Because if so, he's voiced by the guy who did Spongebob. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. So, ultimately, you get about an hour, a little bit more. At, well, not even. Not even. I mean, you... No, probably about a, an hour, hour and, and a half between all ten operators of this mode. The stories are not congruent or connected to each other. They're all disparate, discrete experiences, so there's not an overarching story or theme to any of them. It's just basically, it looks like it was put together very haphazardly. They probably outsourced the CG to some company. Not Tra Treyarch definitely didn't do the CG stuff for this. Um, and so you get about an hour, hour and a half of play out of it, and it's not really fun. So, to say there's single-player content in this is still a bit of a stretch. There's no hidden campaign in the game. I know Pac was like, oh, well, I think they still made one, and maybe it comes as DLC later. I, don't, I disagree with that. I do not think that's happening. I think what you're getting here in this package is exactly what you're getting, uh, which means really no significant single-player content whatsoever. So let's talk next about zombies. And I guess maybe that's not true because you can play zombies by yourself. And you can actually add bots in to play with you as well for the first time ever in Zombies. And overall, what I would say about Zombies is that you can tell that the resources that they normally would have spent on the campaign, at least part of those resources, was moved over to Zombies. Because it is hands down the most polished, full-featured, robust Zombies mode ever. It's not even close. Um, I took a bunch of notes of things that I noticed that were, that were different. Um, let's see, uh, there's six classes in zombies. You can create custom zombie game modes, which is something you've never been able to do before. So you can set up all the parameters as far as perks, elixirs, talismans, starting weapons, equipment, special weapons. You can set all that up. 
You can also choose where like the weapons spawn, the spawn points for the weapons. Um, so you can really customize it pretty much however you want. Uh, players can drop in the game scales, which is a huge, huge deal for this. I, I probably 30% of zombies matches that I have actually finish with all four players like at the end. Hmm. And this has been a problem in this. Oh, Cause they drop out and then it's still that hard. Right. It's four people hard. Yep. This, this one absolutely scales. Like I saw it as soon as one player dropped, you could see it. And then when it got down to just the last two of us left, it was literally half of the zombies were, were pouring into, into the match. So it scales really well based upon the number of players, which is something they've tried to do in the past, but were unsuccessful at it. And this year it is successful. Um, there are two storylines at, at launch. There's two storylines across three maps. Um, there is the Gladiator Arena. There's the Titanic, literally the ship, the Titanic, oh. <clears throat> and Alcatraz. And um, obviously, all oh, extremely different. The Titanic is very claustrophobic and tight. Um, the Gladiator Arena is not just the arena that you see, that you've seen in the trailers and everything. There are four different sections that split off of that, and then there's like labyrinths underneath, kind of like the Colosseum. Is that where we're running now? Uh, I can't. Yep. Or n yeah, this is the Colosseum. And you can see it has elements like all the zombies modes have, like mm -hmm. boarding up, but it's not as prevalent this time. So in zombies, typically, like the main room that you start in, there's windows. And you board them up, and the zombies start coming, and that's not how this one really works. Like, to go to the places where you have to board up the windows, you have to kind of splinter off away from the main kind of combat area, uh, which means that I wasn't doing that much of it. Like, typically, that's something you're constantly doing. Putting the board, the zombies break down the board, you put the boards back up, here comes the next wave. You're not really doing that on this one, because a lot of times the windows that they come in are way, way far away from where you and the three other players are. Um, you can go there and you can board it up, but you're way far away from the other players, which means you're putting yourself at risk, which means if you die, you may not get revived in time, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's a pretty big change for, for the mode. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's a brand new zombies mode called Rush. So typically how zombies works, for those of you who aren't versed in zombies. What the hell was that? That one zombie just flew away. No, th for whatever reason, I don't know if this is a glitch, but they all are. Every time I shoot one, they fly up into the sky. What? I don't know. <laughs> I, I haven't figured out yet whether this is, like, look at that. I, yeah, I, they just flew away. Yeah, they're flying up into the sky. I don't know if this was a glitch or if that's just, just like... Sending the zombies to heaven. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so typically how zombies works is you start in one room... As you get kills, you get points, and then you can spend those points on buying <laughs> guns or ammo. This is the most entertaining zombies as, zombie mode has ever been to me. Yeah. And so you can spend those points on new guns and ammo, or you can spend those points on opening doors that open up new areas of the map, which will give you access to new weapons and rinse and repeat until you, you finish the last uh, spawn wave. But there's a new mode called Rush, and Rush is basically a multiplier based uh, take on the mode. So it's not the way I just described where you're kind of unlocking new areas of the map. They're always unlocked and you're just trying to combo zombies and kill as many as you can in a row. Um, you don't have to pay for guns and doors. They're automatically open and it's just kind of a more free flowing arcade style take on zombies. And I actually had a ton of fun with that. Uh, another big change is special weapons charge with each kill in that mode so if you have a special weapon and the more you use it the more powerful it gets and it turns into this like i don't know, like compounding interest i guess mm -hmm. is the best the best analogy to use the more you use it the bigger it gets until by like the 10th time you've used it it just wipes out zombies in like one swipe uh, so in that in conjunction with the multipliers it's kind of this building 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 die start over build 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 die start over but i liked it it's a nice change of pace uh, from the typical zombies mode. Um, elixirs have been replaced with, or elixirs replace bubblegum. Remember the, did you play the last zombies mode? No. I haven't played a zombies mode in years. Well, they had bubblegum in them, or the, where you go to a dispenser and get like these pieces of bubblegum, and they're basically your perks. Now they're elixirs, and you start with four at the beginning of every match, and they're just on a cooldown. So you don't have to keep mm -hmm. buying them and spending your current. It just got way too complicated after a while, and they've kind of streamlined that, that part of it. And, and now the only thing for you to do is kick ass. 
Pretty much. Yeah. Because you're all out of bubble, bubble gum. gum. Yeah, they've taken out a lot of the frivolities from the <laughs> zombies mode and kind of streamlined it, but then expanded the parts that people really like. It's, it's really good. I have never been a fan of the zombies mode in Call of Duty. It's one of those things where I would play it long enough when I, so I could review the game. Basically, yeah, it was I, when I felt like I got it and I understood it, I stopped and never went back. I just always felt like there were better things to play, both as a shooter and as a zombie killing. So there are better horde like, modes. I mean, that's no, all it is—is is yeah. a horde mode. But I like the—I mean, I always enjoyed like the whole thing where they'd play with it, where like the the what was the was it for the first Black Ops? It was like JFK and yeah, and Khrushchev yeah, and all. Right. Those guys. Yeah. It was, I was like that's fun. Like yeah. oh, that's neat. I didn't—I only played like three matches of that, but it was—I was, I enjoy it when they. When they had a little fun with it, but this is not a thing that I, yeah, I even, if, if you never, if I didn't do this show, I'd probably forget that this was a thing. That zombies was yeah, a thing? no one seems to talk about the zombies mode. Well, much. Treyarch's not going to be happy to hear that, because they basically... I mean, the chat's been talking about how, like, the one guy was like, I've never seen anyone even stream this. Everyone's just streaming Blackout. Yeah. Yeah, Blackout is the star of, of the show, it looks like. Well, it's Call of Duty Battle Royale. Yeah. Of course it's going to be. Um... And I've you know we've talked about the blackout mode and what I thought about it. I mean I've I have played some more now with mm-hmm. the final version and nothing's changed. It's basically the same as the beta. And this is the stuff you haven't played before because it wasn't part of the beta. Right. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to talk about it on the show. I mean I can talk about blackout briefly. Um, I think it's probably the best battle royale mode out there, but I'm not a big battle royale player. Um, it's certainly the most polished. Probably the best looking, although I'm guessing maybe some people's rigs can make PUBG look pretty good. Mm. Although, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I know my rig doesn't make it look good. And at least, you know... It can, it, the turd gets pretty shiny, but it yeah. doesn't look like Blackout. <laughs> and at least Fortnite has kind of a cartoony art style that, you know, hides any technical limitations or whatever. This is hands down the most polished, um, best looking Battle Royale mode. Turnover is really quick, just like mm-hmm. most Battle Royale modes. Like most games for me anyway, because I'm not that good at it, last five to ten minutes. Um, matches, generally, if you stick around to watch them, like sometimes like I'll play and after I get eliminated, I'll start working and doing something else and not paying attention. And it seems like matches generally last 40 minutes max uh, by the time they whittle it all down to the last couple people. Uh, my, I think probably my biggest complaint about Blackout, other than the fact that I just don't care about Battle Royale that much, is there's no really no progression at all unless you're really freaking good. I've played, I don't know, between the beta and after getting the final code, I've probably played 50 rounds and I've unlocked nothing. <laughs> nothing. If you don't finish in like the top like five or ten, you get nothing. There's no progression. There's really no unlocks for Blackout. You just play it for fun, which maybe that's okay. Yeah. Maybe we should do that more often in video games. <laughs> hey, how about we just play this to have fun? It's not like we play GoldenEye for unlocks or any kind of progress, but there's no progression in Blackout at all. It's like you play, you die, you reload, and you get back into a game, and it is really fast. Um, I guess one thing I can say about multiplayer that I didn't know before from playing the beta is the final map count. So there's 14 maps in competitive multiplayer, four old ones and 10 brand new ones, which is impressive, and that's something that Treyarch always does better than every other Call of Duty developer. Um, most Call of Duty games, you're lucky to have 8 to 10 maps at launch, period. And maybe a couple of those are old maps that have been reworked. Uh, Treyarch has delivered 10 brand new maps and 4 classics. And I would argue Treyarch's maps, classic maps, are legit classic maps. Some of the best in the series history. Um, the new modes in competitive multiplayer are Heist and Control. And I don't know, dude. Like, so <laughs> all these modes that are like... Here's something. Be the first to capture it and then take it back here while the other team tries to stop you. Or pick it up and take it to the other team's base while they try to stop you. Or get there, initiate something, and wait out the timer while the other team tries to kill you. All those modes are just, in this game in particular, are just worthless, pointless. (laughs) Because they all give you the option of just killing the other team. So all these modes where if you die once and you're out and you got to wait, all these maps that are like where you got to control a point or there's a moving control point, those games never finish. No one ever finishes those games by controlling the point or defending the bomb or defusing the bomb or exploding the bomb. Ultimately, 
it's just team deathmatch. Everybody dies before that stuff ever happens. In Call of Duty, Black Ops 4 in particular. So the addition of the heist and the control stuff, it really doesn't move the needle for me at all. Um, as far as the experience goes, we've, we, we talked about it when we, when we covered the beta, but it's middle ground between World War II and the crazy fast traversal stuff that we saw from three or four years ago. It does manage to find like a nice middle ground. Um, I think what I would really say overall about this game is that, well, you can see from the lower third there, it's like a Swiss army knife. It, it's like, hey, what is, what is every important mm. thing in first-person shooters in 2018? Well, we're going to put it in our game. And while I get that that's probably going to service a large part of the audience, ultimately, it, it has no consistent tone or theme. It just feels like this... I don't know, ragtag group of modes that were just slammed together and put into a suite to sell for $60. Um, particularly, like, the Black Ops games always had kind of a consistent thing that went through all the modes. And look, they've had tons of modes in their games since Black Ops 2. And uh, with this one, it's just like this weird kind of... It's like a video game Frankenstein, I guess is the best way to put it. It's like all these little parts that have been kind of patched together, but none of them really relate to or talk to the other parts in any meaningful way. So you got your zombies, which make, has no bearing on anything else. Then you have your battle royale, which is completely different from everything else. Then you have your traditional multiplayer suite, which is what people have been playing all along, which is like your, your comfort food or whatever. So the overall experience is very weird. It's weird to have played so many years of Call of Duty in a row and then have something like this. But the big question is, should people buy it? And, you know, I guess I would say, yes, I, I think people should. If they like Call of Duty, they should buy this game. It's, in my opinion, the best Battle Royale game on the market. Um, I think it's probably going to completely destroy PUBG within like three months. I think maybe the PC folks who play PUBG will probably stick with it. But I think everyone on Xbox who's playing PUBG will probably move over and start playing Black the Ops game, 4. The game that works. Yeah. Yeah, because it also has, does have problems still mm -hmm. on both PC I mean, and, they just and drop, Xbox. They dropped the performance and the settings on the Xbox version again for launch. Yeah. Like, they launched it and made it worse. I know. What's going on? And I have a lot of friends who play PUBG and play PUBG Xbox specifically and this they when this beta the blackout beta hit they're like oh my god I never knew it could be like this yeah. kind of thing yeah you know, like they they are all in on on the for blackout they're buying it just for blackout mode they don't care about anything else about it well I I knew that I was never going to like battle royale when I played this and didn't like it because I could recognize that everything about it was better than pretty much everything else out there and I still didn't enjoy it mm -hmm. so I'm not going to bash Blackout because I know that people like Battle Royale really love it. It's, I just don't really like that mode for whatever re for a multitude of reasons. It's just not my thing. Um, but if you like Battle Royale, buy this game. And I know it may be hard to say if you like Battle Royale, buy this game. Because most Battle Royale modes are free. But I think when people... Well, the big one is. Yeah. I think when people start to consider the other elements that you get in the game... Um, that they, they probably will inevitably end up trying and playing. And I will say this, this is absolutely the best zombies ever. Um, I think people will realize, yeah, what I'm going to get out of this game to get the polish, to not have the cartoony art style, the kind of over-the-top tone of Fortnite. I think that actually turns off some players. It doesn't turn me off, but, I know, but I, I'm sure some people don't like the look of Fortnite. Um, this is for you. This is the serious battle royale mode. It also has plenty of homage to past Call of Duty games. Literally, entire old Call of, Call of Duty Black Ops maps stuck in the Battle Royale map, hmm. which is pretty cool. It's like, especially when you first start playing, you don't know the map yet, and you discover, like, Nuketown. You're like, oh my god, like, they've just planted Nuketown, like, right? And you remember, like, well, I can hide here, and I can only be seen from, like, these angles or whatever. Again, it's like comfort food. It's like, I know this part of the map. Uh, the map itself, I think, is the perfect size for the number of players. I think they did a good job with that. But the, I, the map does need a little bit of work. Like, there's one section of it that's basically just a desert. And, like, who the hell is going to go there to fight? 
You're you have no cover. There's no trees, and literally, it's like probably like twenty percent of the map. It's like the whole one corner of it is just this desert wasteland. Like I don't know what they're thinking with that part of the map. Maybe they have a plan for it ultimately. Um, but overall, it, it's it's the best battle royale mode there is. But you're gonna pay for it. You're not gonna get it for free. So I think that's the decision everyone's gonna have to make with themselves, whether they're willing to pay for a battle royale at first. And two, whether they're willing to pay 60 bucks just for Battle Royale if they don't plan on playing the uh, competitive multiplayer or zombies. Um, do I miss the campaign? I was so proud you didn't, you didn't ask me this. No, I don't. Hmm. I don't miss it at all, man. Like, Well, I, would, I don't, have never liked a Treyarch campaign, so... I always have. I, I wouldn't miss it either. But the last like couple Call of Duties, like, I found myself forcing myself to get through the campaign... And it was actually kind of a relief, even though they're short. It was kind of a relief to be like, I don't have to slog through another one of those. Yeah, the only uh, the only Call of Duty campaign I've liked since Modern Warfare Two was uh, Infinite Warfare. Yeah, that was great. That had all the crazy spacey stuff, yeah. and like everybody else hated it, but we loved it. Yep. We'll never see it again. <laughs> but yeah, I liked what you did. I, in I think Ward. we will see another Call of Duty campaign. Though. Campaign, yeah. I don't think we'll ever see another like military future sci-fi thing like no. that. They're gonna no, because it did not do well either. They're gonna consider that poison for the rest uh, of the... absolutely, which is a shame. But uh, it's look, it's very the whole experience is very polished. Everything worked great right on day one. I mean, no server issues, no hiccups, like. The matchmaking is lightning quick. The blackout battle royale, it's like you're in and out of games just like that. Like, it's a, you can, I mean, it, you can tell it. They took a lot of time and they spent it on stuff that they normally wouldn't have spent it on because they had a lot more free time mm -hmm. not worrying about a campaign. And, you know, the campaign would last for five hours and I'd never touch it again. And then I'd end up playing all the other stuff for the next, like, six months, a year or whatever. And, I think they've just finally figured out that that's the way most people play Call of Duty. So I would like to just see them create a platform out of Call of Duty where you're just paying for maps and stuff like that every year. I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, but I think they're starting to inch that direction a little bit with this. And uh, if you're a Call of Duty fan, buy it. You're going to love it. You're going to play the multiplayer to death. Um, maybe dip your toe into Battle Royale. Maybe you find out that you like it. Mm -hmm. And you, maybe you did, you've tried it before and you didn't like it. But this is certainly the most polished... Um, and best looking take on the genre yet. And it's got to be frustrating for PUBG to just watch Activision's money walk in and <laughs> that was gonna make their game irrelevant. I mean, they've made their money, obviously, already m many times over, but it's still got to be pretty frustrating to just... And we talked about it. As soon as we saw PUBG for the first time, I said somebody with a lot of deep pockets is going to come in and take this over, and that's what we're seeing with uh, Black Ops 4. So... I do recommend a purchase. It's not going to convert anyone. If you're a Call of Duty hater and you hate the whole, you know, respawn, die, respawn, get a kill or two, die, respawn, die, respawn, get five kills, die. If you hated that, that, that hasn't changed in the multiplayer. Um, I've seen some people say that uh, they haven't been shot in the back as much in this. I, I, that, <laughs> I don't see where they're getting that. I still get shot in the back constantly. Uh, but that's just, that's a byproduct of having such tight, confined maps where you're going to have constant confrontation. There's no way you're ever going to get spawns to work perfectly so that uh, people aren't going to come up behind you and shoot you in the back. It's just the, the nature of the beast. So that's it. That's Call of Duty Black Ops 4. This is a game where I, we will not be coming back next week to talk about more, I don't no, think. Because no, um, I'm never going to play it. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> And nope. there's nothing else to talk about. Not really. No. I mean... We'll probably, maybe like when the time comes to sort of contrast it with Battlefield, or if there's a time when Battlefield's Battle Royale comes out and we want to compare it to Blackout and how yeah. that, what the status of Blackout at the same time, because their Battle Royale is down the road. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll, we'll use it as a, as a touchstone later. Yeah. It will be compared to other games yeah. for a long time to come. And I wonder, too, what happens next year. Because mm -hmm. that's the thing. It's like, you think about Battle Royale... That's not something that you just put out for like a year, right? And then I, it's I think gone. You, you got I think they need to accept the idea that they're committing to Black Ops Four being a thing that persists right. for years. Right. You know? Yep. A game as a service. Yeah. So what happens with Infinity Ward? Are they? Is Activision like, no, you can't make a battle royale mode? Mm, How is that going to work? 
I mean, Infinity Ward, I guess we might want to bring it, you know, pull it all the way back to the more campaign focused thing. Yeah. Um, you know, you could have like kind of Black Ops becomes the battle royale platform, whereas like Infinity Ward's games are more uh, traditional shooter things. Now, yeah. what happens with Sledgehammer? Sledgehammer just makes maps. Now. <laughs> <laughs> they would not be happy about that, I don't think. But, I mean, uh, a lot of Activision developers are just, just do support for this no, series right. now. Yeah. It's like, oh, what happened to High Moon? Yeah, they just got sucked in. They made two, two, one pretty good and one really good Transformers game that didn't sell, and now they just sort of make maps for Call of Duty. I guess. It happened to Beanox. Yeah, Beanox is did a lot of the multiplayer stuff for this game. Yeah. Didn't Beanox do the terrible Tony Hawk like skateboard yeah. pro game? And they did, uh, they did uh, a couple of Spider-Man. Tony games. Hawk Ride. They did Shattered Dimensions and Edge of Time. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's better than Shaba Games, which made Web of Shadows and was instantly shut down. Yeah, so. yeah. Beanox logo comes up when you boot up mm-hmm. uh, Black Ops Four, so they're still staying in business, which is good. So there you go. That's Call of Duty Black Ops Four. I will be online playing. If you guys want to play with me, I am playing the PS4 version, and I am at Dinfire on PSN. Add me, and we'll become friends, and we'll play games together. So that brings us. I told you this was going to be a short episode, man. Yeah, it is pretty. Oh, it is short. Two hours. It's like nothing. <laughs> and that brings us to our trailer of the week for the week. I figured with all of the uh, big Call of Duty uh, discussion going on at the end of the show and the fact that Call of Duty does not have a campaign, that the best trailer to run today would be the campaign trailer for Battlefield Five. Ooh, spicy. Yeah. And as we all know, the campaigns in Battlefield games have not traditionally been very good. I'll let you judge. It is in the moment of truth that we uncover who we really are. What sacrifices we can endure. What choices we can live with. Pushed beyond any known breaking point. We discover what we are capable of. and accept the truth of who we must become. Because survival is not a given. We must fight for it. This is war, son. I've had to peer around this damn Starlink yeah. thing. You guys don't realize it, but like our monitor is right under the camera. So sometimes when they cut back, like if Matt and I, our eyes are down, because if we're watching the footage, I think this is an advantage mm-hmm. of Game Face is that we have B-roll of games. And a lot of times when you're watching the B-roll, it'll remind you of elements of a game or something to talk about. But anyway, this thing has been in the way the whole show, and I've not been able to see the B-roll. So if this oh. show is subpar, I'll well, blame it on Well, good thing you're that. taking it down after all the B-roll is gone. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see, we got a bunch of questions. We're going to answer a couple extras tonight because the show's a little shorter, so we have some more time to answer your questions. So, mm-hmm. I thought that that's fine, but like, I feel like more and more, I feel like the right move on Battlefield is to wait until they've finished it, which feels like it's going to be next year. Or you sometime. mean to buy it? Yeah, to yeah, buy like, like March. Like, wait until the final part of the campaign is out. Wait until they've put the battle royale mode in, like to yeah. see how it all kind of shakes out. The other thing I would say too is that. The trailers for Battlefield campaigns always look amazing. Oh, yeah. And then you play them, and they're just awful. They're not good at campaigns. No. And uh, DICE, Dice, is, is, Dice is not good at campaigns. Nope. They've, 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 they're some they've are better mastered than others. mastered multiplayer, but... but... Also true of, the, of Battlefront 2. That was not a very engaging campaign. No. Um, I, I, please, 
get, please respawn. Put put fallen Jedi out quickly. <laughs> like I'm so tired of, of of Dice's take on campaign stuff. Okay, so we got tons of questions. Keep them coming because we're going to answer a bunch for you guys because we have plenty of time. Um, here's one from Very Sauce, I think V E R I seven A S. Uh, does Blobs... I think it's Veritas. Is that Veritas? The, the, seven, se- is the a seven is a T. Yes. Uh, does Blobs 4 outsell PUBG on Xbox? Yes. You think Blobs 4 is going to sell 10 million on Xbox? PUBG sold 10 million on Xbox? That's what I heard. I didn't see that. I thought they were at like 10 million on Xbox. That's insane. I had not heard that at all. I don't know. To answer your question, no. <laughs> it won't sell 10 million on Xbox. I, I mean, thought, it, the, the sales on Xbox for PUBG were crazy. It sells saying. 20 million every year, typically, which means probably 12 of that goes to P, the PS4, whatever the lead platform mm-hmm. is, and then the scraps go to the other two. So no, I mean, if it's really sold 10 million, I don't think it does. I don't think it outsells PUBG one way or the other on Xbox. If I hadn't heard that number you just gave me, I would say absolutely. I, I'm shocked that PUBG sold that much. How many Xboxes are there in the U.S.? 30 million? Or not in the U.S., I don't know. That's like 50% saturation. Maybe somebody can look up the sales figures for it. I'm doing that now. Okay. I'll look for another well, question. On July 4th, there was a, it, they announced it had sold 8 million copies on Xbox One. Wow. So that was months ago. I assume they're probably yeah, sold Yeah, they're probably around 10. Then. Yeah. That's insane. Holy crap. Yeah, then I would say maybe Lifetime it has a chance of hitting that, but definitely not by the end of the year. No. I mean, it'll probably sell four or five million on Xbox, I'm guessing. No, I mean, I, and I had, a, I mean, I had another friend who's a big PUBG fan who was like, played Blackout, loved it, and was like, this is going to be the best-selling Call of Duty ever. And I'm like, you think this is going to sell 36 million right. copies? I don't think and he's you like, he's like oh. wait, what? I'm yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> do not underestimate how many copies Call of Duty sold in its heyday. Yeah. Like, uh, Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2 are juggernaut. Like, you just can't. Yeah. I mean, Call of Duty sells crazy every year. Yeah, but like we're talking about a series where 15 million is kind of like, eh. You know, like, yeah. in, in comparison to what it used to be. Well, today we just posted the episode of Pactor Factor on YouTube where, he, where it's basically Black Ops 4 versus Red Dead Redemption 2, which one will sell more before the end of the year. Mm. And Pac picks Black Ops. For obvious reasons, on more platforms, blah blah blah. But all the comments on YouTube were, "He's insane. The Red Dead's gonna destroy Black Ops because people just hate Call of Duty for whatever reason, mm. and they just don't want it to outsell a game like Red I Dead." I think Red Dead might outsell it lifetime. I don't. Uh, by the end yeah, of the yeah, year, I'd agree I don't know. I don't know about uh, by the end of the year though. I don't think there's any way by the end of the year it does. It, people it know de- next. It year might depend when they get the battle royale mode into Red Dead. You also got to remember that Red Dead will be marketed for the next two years. Right. Whereas this Call of Duty will have its four-month window. It goes away and, and it looks another like, one. And it looks like maybe their next game is Bully, too. Yeah. Judging by that casting call. So, like, man, GTA 6 is a long way out. Yeah. Actually, in this week's Pactor Factor, where he, ta- he talked about it, I actually cut out because... Pac's been a rambling man for the last <laughs> couple rounds of episodes. Like... The first episode for this round of episodes, after he got back from vacation, the actual recording of that episode was an hour and ten minutes. Wow. Yeah. he's. Been, <laughs> we have been doing a lot of cutting to Pactor Factor to get it down to a reasonable size. but And that's one of the things that we cut out of this week's episode, was him saying that Bully, Midnight Club, L.A. Noir, all the Agent, all these franchises still should come out before the next GTA, which makes him think that GTA has come out in like 2023 or something. That's about what, I mean, I don't think, I don't think Agent's ever coming out, but like. He thinks Agent still is a thing. Okay. Um, he has I mean, pretty good connections to does, Take Two. He does, but like, still a thing doesn't mean coming out in two years, but who knows. Yeah. I, but I think, I do agree with him that GTA 6 is 2023 or so at the earliest. Like, that is, a, that is next, right middle of next gen. It's crazy, No dude. question. Dude, that's like 10 years between them. Yeah. I'm going to play one more GTA before I die. But I, I mean, I've been saying that for a long time. <laughs> if also, I'm lucky. Also this week, 
confirmed Halo Infinite not at X, XO18, like I said. Yep. That is a Gears of War convention, my friend. Looking that way. Uh, w. Matthew, got to answer one of his every week. Um, first Dragon Ball Fighters got the highest viewership for Evo ever. That's what he's saying. Mm. For my question, what do you think of Discord launching a game store, given their massive user base? Seems like they have a shot. Hell yeah, they have a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you have an audience that big, you can sell anything. Anything. Might as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be a boon for Discord, because otherwise... How does Discord make money? I don't know. I mean, that's the question Ads. of like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the question that like the senator should have asked. I don't care about Facebook, but how does Discord What's make this money? Discord thing. How really does though, money? how does it make money? I don't know. It has no revenue stream. It has to do this. It has to find some way to make money, or the investors are going to stop giving them money to keep developing the product. So. Um, I think it's a smart move. It's something that Discord's going to have to do, and I wouldn't be surprised if Discord comes up with like 10 other revenue streams in the next five years because it's easy to be the tech darling that everyone's shoveling money into, but it, there comes an inflection point where you have to start showing a return on all that investment money. They're not investing because they think it's a cool idea, bro. They're mm. investing because they think they can make money off of it, and that's Discord is now in that like prove it point and this is probably just the first step towards that uh j reed vic 7 with water levels and underwater exploration making a comeback in new games that's actually a really astute observation uh like shadow of the tomb raider and assassin's creed odyssey is there a particular reason it seems like that approach went away for a long time you guys have all an all-time favorite underwater sections in games that's a great question um i mean the reason they went away for a long time is because underwater stuff sucks Typically, um, it's very annoying. It's, it, like, it was always kind of a thing where, I mean, I think part of it is that, like, pe people who threw underwater sections in their games never considered that in order to do an underwater section properly, you basically have to come up with a, a whole different game. Yeah. Like, you're basically saying you're, Only mechanics. you're going to let the character fly now. Yeah. And you have to adjust the camera for that. You have to adjust how everything works. You have to adjust the distance. You can interact with things to make it, because, like, you're in a different position. And I think, mainly, it's just coming down to... Uh, there, that some developers are figuring out how to do that properly now, and it's not sucking time away from the development that they can't, that they then like you know have to leave something else off the table. Um, also, I think the temptation is there for the developers because you can make underwater stuff look so good now. Yeah. Like the underwater. Every time I dive under the water in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I'm blown away all over again. It looks amazing. I'll say this: Tomb Raider does underwater swimming way better than Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, in part because they let you hold your breath a lot longer. That's part of it, but the other part too is just like steering. When I'm diving down, I can clearly see a hole, and I'm trying to like get my orientation to the center of that hole, and inevitably he he, because I'm playing with him, is like hitting the top of the <laughs> hole. Like it's just after playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it probably if I had not played Shadow, I wouldn't be as harsh on the swimming in Creed. But Shadow of the Tomb Raider has great swimming. Yeah. I always felt completely in control. Wherever I wanted to go, I could go there. And uh, I don't have much of a problem with Odyssey swimming. My my once I'm sw swimming this way, it's fine. It's when I'm diving down. Like it'll never let mm -hmm. you put the camera perfectly down. It always is at an angle, so he or she is always swimming in that angle. And if you want to like hit a hole that's like a hundred yards down, you have to like kind of spin as you go down to get to the center of the hole. You can't just swim straight in a line and get through the hole. That's not my experience, but uh, I do think Tomb Raider did it better. Yeah. Um, my issues with the Assa Assassin's Creed Odyssey swimming is um, the shark. The fighting the sharks is stupid. It I just use the bow and kill him before I get. It the doesn't water. really work right. Um, and I think I still th I have this problem with Origins as well. I think they swim too slow. They do swim slow. And like I know there's the the lunge thing, but the lunge button. The, 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 like the cool down after you lunge is just, it's the same amount of time. Right. Like you don't, it doesn't like it actually, doesn't, it's not, like it's not actually fast. any faster. Right. So like, uh, I would like if they continue putting the underwater stuff in Assassin's Creed, please let me sprint, swim, or swim faster by default. Like something. Because they move too slow right now. Why, as for why they went away, I think they went away because people didn't like them. No. It's a very, it's a claustrophobic thing. You always have the chance of dying there. It's always there. Like, if I make the turn, I go down this little tunnel, am I going to have the oxygen to come back through the tunnel and then make it back up to the surface? I think people just don't like that. Like, mm -hmm. they don't like the tension that's involved with it. 
it doesn't bother me that much. But uh, but I think most people don't enjoy swimming sections in games. And to Matt's point, because it does completely change the control scheme, I think that also throws people for a loop. Um, so I think that's why it hasn't been popular. What's your favorite underwater section of a game, though? Well, I mean, my favorite underwater sections of games would be games that are t- t- take place entirely underwater. Like uh, Echo the like, Dolphin? No, like uh, I would pr- probably say either... Uh, uh, um, Subnautica or um, uh, what's that stupid g- oh Endless Ocean I like yeah. the, the Endless Ocean games on the Wii a lot um, that kind of thing like you get, but those games are designed to be underwater if you're talking about a section of another ga- of a game that is underwater um, the most memorable one I would probably say is Clanker's Cavern in the first Banjo Kazooie, which to this day yep. is one of the scariest things I've ever seen. <laughs> again, like, I don't know why that level freaks me out so much, it, but that would be. Everything's my, all rusted and like yeah. worn, and, and it's, it's like just, you didn't want to get in the water. Wasn't yeah. there like a green like oil? Yeah, yeah. Slick it's, on it's, the like, top it's like it's like moldy and, yeah. and algae covered and gross, and and you know Clanker's just sitting there looking at you. Yeah, all the yeah time. that's this right. Giant thing underwater. It's like, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I think my favorite uh, water section, and I know people may hate me for this or think I'm insane, is the water temple from Ocarina of Time. Oh, boy. Generally heralded as one of the most difficult dungeons in the history of The Legend of Zelda, but that is absolutely why I like it so much. There's one section that literally, like, I was playing through it with one of my really good friends in Philadelphia. He was playing it. He lived below me. We were both playing it at the same time. And we both got to this point, and we both got stuck. And we were stuck for like a day and a half. We could not figure it out. And as it turned out, what happened was, as you raised the water level, there was a block in one of the rooms. And when you raised the water level enough, that one block was buoyant. Mm -hmm. And it would float up with the water and expose a hole underneath it that you had to swim down in. It took us a day and a half (laughs) of two of us Plus all our friends sitting there watching, trying to, we could, none of us could figure it out. And once we figured it out, we were like, oh, that's freaking like genius. Like there really hadn't been anything like that in 3D yes, the, games at that point. The floating rock. Never would have thought of that. Well, frankly. it was a, just a box. box yeah. yeah. And it just looked like it was just a part of the ground. And then when the water raised up, it was actually buoyant and it floated up to the top and there was a hole underneath it. Mm-hmm. And uh, just like buoyancy in a video game. That was something that we couldn't even comprehend then it was 1998 3d games had only been around for like two years and it was just one of those moments where you're like oh i can see where games can go now all the stuff that they're eventually going to be able to do (laughs) so many different ways to annoy me yeah (laughs) that was kind of one of the first signs to me like okay these are the first 3d games but games are going to do something amazing in the future so that's my most memorable if not my favorite underwater moment in video games um, let's see. Majora Tom, we usually answer one of his. Uh, have decided to forego giving you a Twitch Prime subscription and just subscribe to the channel so I don't have to remember when I've got a resub with Twitch Prime every month. Keep up the great work. Thank you. But the catch is that you actually have to pay real money for that. <laughs> I think that's the catch point. I think that's why people love Twitch Prime. It's because they can give us two fifty without having to spend any money. So thank you very much for spending real your real money to subscribe to us. But I would also say, hey, maybe you can also subscribe with Twitch Prime and <laughs> give us another two fifty. <laughs> I'm joking, but uh, he's not. I'm not. I'll take every dollar we can get. Um, I'm still trying to pay off those damn T-shirts. So uh, thank you very much. Um, but I don't think for most people that that's going to work because. They're already, you know, they're a patron or whatever. So, but thank you, man. That's awesome. Um, oh, Justin Horman. We have not talked about Mega Man 11 on this show. Neither one of us have played it. Maybe we, one of us needs to fix that for next week. Uh, but here's Justin Horman's question. Mega Man 11 seems to be getting good impressions from what I've seen. Can you remember any other game series that has had such a successful revival after such a long time? That's also a great question. You guys are busting them out tonight. Mm. Basically, we're talking about a video game franchise, Zombie, that came back from the dead. I mean, 9 and 10 were very well. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Um, With 10, really. Nothing with that kind of a gap. Darksiders. Uh, (laughs) Street Fighter. 
Yeah, that's a good one. Street Fighter 4 came out kind of, kind of out of nowhere. And Street yep. Fighter 3, while it is a beloved game in the, in the hardcore community, you know, it wasn't Street Fighter 2 by any, by any stretch of the imagination in terms of popularity. And Street Fighter 4 blew, blew the fighting game scene up again where it had been dormant since the 90s. So I would say Street Fighter 4 would be a good example of that. Punch-Out was a pretty good example of that. Mm. It was gone for over a decade before they made the Wii game, which now, wasn't that good. And now it's gone again. Yeah, yeah. Probably because of the Wii game. But yeah, I mean, it was revived after 10 plus years. Um, you could argue Need for Speed when Criterion took it over. Yeah. Um... Duke. Successful revival, though. That's the. Duke that's... Nukem? <laughs> no, that didn't work out. Um, we'll see if Shenmue can do it. Yeah, that, I mean, that's certainly a candidate. It's yeah. possible. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mortal Kombat, that's a good one. Jay Reed Vic. Yeah. Mortal that Kombat a was a. That was a major you know what I was thinking Especially after that, years of terrible games. But wait, I don't think it did really go away, though. Because I was thinking about that. It and I started remembering, like, the it didn't go away, MK but, Mythology, Sub-Zero. Well, that was, and, like, that was, a, that was a ni- the 90s. But um, I'm saying there always were entries of some there, sort. Like, the IP was still alive. There, yeah, it was still alive, but I think for about three games. Because Mortal Kombat came back with Mortal Kombat 9. The ninth one was the resurrection, basically. And for at least... Four or five games, we just sort of wished it would go away. So that kind of counts. I mean, can you tell the difference between Mortal Kombat Armageddon, Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Mortal Kombat whatever the other one was that came out on the PS2? Like, but they kept coming out. I guess they was did. My point. Just we either didn't notice or tried to hide. <laughs> like it was, it was awful. Damn, Tao Man! Did credit ever get out of jail? He did absolutely. Um, he ended up serving, I, he was sentenced to five years and he served like two and a half. Mm. Two and a half years in prison in a Philadelphia prison for graffiti. He did get out though and he does not write anymore. He gave it up, so it worked. He just accounts. Yep. Uh, now he's just make, making money and not getting arrested. Uh, here's a good one. SMC92 Ian. Are you guys playing Odyssey because it's still good or just out of need to complete it fully? Hmm. Uh, I still like it. I'm still I fun. like it. I am burnt out on it. I Honestly, I do not want to keep playing it, but I am at the end. And uh, I've taken like literally like four pages of notes for the eval. I, once you get to a certain point with a game, you just got to go get over the finish line. Mm-hmm. And uh, the late game in Odyssey, it, it, I know you're not there yet. You haven't really gone through like a lot of the content, but it does, it starts to wear thin. You, you get start to get sick of like, oh, like the game seems like it's going to end and then you meet someone they're like, oh, well, you, it, you, I can't do this for you until you do this, 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 and this. And then you have to go out and... Mm. It, it, it does it, seem to be the, the formula is like, that someone in one city tells you to meet someone in another city, you go meet them. They're like, well, I can help you, but you got to help this guy, this guy, and this guy first. And then yeah. you do three three quests and then come back. And they're like, well, I know a thing, but actually this other guy took the thing, so we got to go get it from him. And then you go do another thing with them, and then they come back to his their place, and then they give you the thing you need, and that sends you to the next city with the next person who then repeats it. Now, here's what I would say. Now that I've played basically the whole game, I think I just have the last boss to go. Here's some tips I would give you. If you're just starting to play now, as soon as you start, travel. Just get in the boat and just sail around and stop at every island and sink once one spot. Get a, get a fast travel point everywhere. Yeah. Because once you have visited every island, the game becomes so much more manageable. Because you start getting these quests and you're like, you'll get the quest here. And then you need to go all the way over here to get it. And, like, if you don't just go around and, like, get at least one sink spot on every island, what you end up doing is you find the island that has a sink spot that's closest, you go there, you call the ship there, you get into the ship, and then you got to sail down there. So I wish from the beginning that I had just sailed all around the map and just synced at least one spot on every piece of territory. Although be aware that the ocean is, the the sea is level gated. So if you go too far north, but pretty much, you're going to be up against level 40 ships, and yeah. they will kill you. They will real yeah. fast. But I but wish. But in the early part, of the, you know, filling out the that the place you start in the lower right of the map, big help. Yeah, big big help. 
I, I just in and in general, if you're sailing someplace and you're sailing past an island that you haven't synced yet, stop, get off, sink it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the game, I'm telling you, it will pay huge dividends to have everything synced because they're just sending you all over the place. And you can literally just fast travel in very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like, the end of the game, like, the quests at the end, like, I remember we were talking last week, and I was like, oh, I haven't had a quest where I was getting, like, ten or 15,000. Well, now I have quests where I'm getting, like, 30,000 yeah. XP. And sometimes it's, like, so stupid. It's like, hey, go over here and get the hat or whatever. You go over and get a hat and bring it back 30,000 XP. Yeah, they're, they're basically, yeah, they're basically, like, at the end of the game, just making sure that you're ready for the final confrontation. Another thing I would say, too... And the, my eval will be coming out in the next couple days or whatever. Another thing I would say, too, is that the level gating thing, there's a section from, like, where you're level, like, 25 to, like, 35 where it's just easy street. Mm -hmm. Literally, I could kill everybody, never died. And then I got to, like, level 35, and then suddenly the enemies are all level 40. And so, there, to me, there were three choke points in the game where if you're playing naturally you get to a point where the game is basically like, oh, no, 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 no. If you want to continue the campaign, you have to go back and play all the side missions and clear all the stuff out. And uh, I just finally got over that hump, that 35 to 40 hump. Um, and now I'm just kind of washing, rinsing through the game. So and I would say that if you're going to play the game, don't beeline the story. Play some of the side stuff because some of it's fun. Well, like, I would say do that because you're going to have to. You don't have a choice. Yeah, you cannot like, beeline I, the story. But, I would never have known you didn't have a choice because I kind of organically wandered through and this looks, oh, what are these guys doing? They're doing this, a Minotaur thing? Which is okay, we'll do this, go over there. I, I let myself get distracted and wander around and like, no, I'm, I hit level 50 and I'm not anywhere near done with the game. But yeah. like, you know, as long as you're pulling in those kind of like quests off the mess, off the, the, the bulletin boards, you're going to level up just fine. You're you, know. you have to. You're going to have to play most of the game anyway, so you might as well just play it while it's there is what I would say. Because you're about... gonna either there's tons of quests that I was like I don't want to do that and I'm not doing that and I mean, and, not... I, and ten hours later there I was because I had mm -hmm. to I had to do the quest to get level enough so I could invade that next fort where the guys are four levels higher than me or whatever to get that thing that's hidden on that one guy in that fort that you need mm -hmm. to accomplish this mission like. I will say this though, if you if you use the right abilities and you are using the fire and the poison and Fire's a big that kind deal. of thing. I so I so the guy I had to beat for to be the number one mercenary was level fifty. Uh, and I beat him when I was forty six. Yeah. And I didn't intend to. If I, you have the elemental just, stuff. I yeah. didn't realize he was even him. He just wandered yeah. through and attacked me and so I decided to fight him and I killed him and it's like you you know, achievement unlock. I'm like, wait, that was the level fifty guy? Like I totally I just destroyed him. Like the fire is key like yeah. the, use the, the there's fire two thing. different things in the trees for fire boost both of them well the, all one the one is the thing that just sets the blade on fire and yep. then the one above that like boosts the damage and the and right. the, the the time the, the build guys up. on fire the build up um yeah. the, the, like the the third upgrade for that is 40 percent bonus fire yeah. damage which is huge you and the final up difference. the final up upgrade for the actual setting of the thing it you, know, you set the blade on fire, and there's no cooldown when yeah. your blade runs out of fire. So just you're just a oh, perpetually you have to keep blade. turning it on though. Yeah, which but, is but annoying. But it's like, like it lasts for like almost like a minute. Yeah, and like that's usually by that point, that's enough to kill almost anything. That's oh, coming dude, at I you. beat like so. There's like that collection of beasts that you have to kill. Yeah. Like the first couple. Was I of, right that the the pig is the worst one? It was the hardest yeah. one because it spawned other pigs that made it hard. Yeah. And because it's you don't really have great gear at yeah. that point. I went back and like once I had the blade with the fire, literally I didn't have to fight. Like I would, <laughs> I would do one combo, fill them up so that they caught on fire, and then just run around and just watch just like chunks of ten thousand mm -hmm. hit points just drain off of these bosses. It makes a big big difference. Definitely use the elemental stuff. I know. Some people may not like to use that stuff in games, so it makes a big difference. I don't usually Odyssey. do that in games. I don't either. either. But like, I, I, I just did like this to one. hit really hard. But like, it yeah. forced me to. I was like, I have to figure out something to make this know, easier. I don't know if being a really good option is a force you to, but it just it's so efficient. Like, why wouldn't you? No, it forced me to because I had to find a way to you had to defeat the enemies. Like, I know you're way over leveled for all the content, but most people don't play games that way, and I'm one of them. And this game, you do have to I go know, back man. and grind. I, I was not grinding to hit the level cap or anything. It's just I was playing the game, and that's what happened. Like, 
long as you're picking up those quest, the the you know the the kind of kill five Spartan leaders quest or whatever, like they're gonna pay off real fast. <laughs> I I thought I thought the leveling curve actually went a little too quick because I think I got like two thirds of the game left and I I maxed out. Dude, you're gonna walk through the end of that game. You're gonna literally one hit everything. No, I'm not because the fucking thing. Oh, it scales. Levels. But if you're fifty, they can't go higher than fifty. Well, yeah, but everything's level forty-eight to fifty. So yeah, either they're my level or a little bit below. So it's not a cakewalk, but they're not gonna kill me usually. Uh, Danny Endurance, what do your partners think of you playing with Starlink toys? Uh, I don't know. My girlfriend's sewing room is full of Transformers toys, so right. she, she's pretty much fine with it. Uh, my my wife's way over stuff like that. She gave up that like. The first two years we knew each other. Yeah, if you're not okay with that, you're not really going to last very long. We you? wouldn't have got married if she wasn't okay with stuff like that. That's just the way it is. Um, let's see. Oh, we never answered the question, though. Are we playing it because it's still good or just out of need to complete it? I said I, I, do, I still like it. I still like it, but I am now playing it out of just the need to complete it. I stopped really enjoying it probably 15 hours ago. Mm. Also, SMC92 and uh, New Game Plus for Spider-Man does not come out tomorrow. They just announced that New Game Plus will not make this update. That's great. Just, just the first part of the, the heist, I think it's called. It's the, the, the first part of the, the season pass stuff. With three new costumes, all of which I don't care about. Uh, here's one from the Legacy. Shane, how accurate is Infamous Second Son and Mark Echo's contents under pressure on graffiti and or graffiti culture? They're completely wrong. <clears throat> the, here's the thing about graffiti that most people don't get is that most of the effort, I mean, you have to be good. You have to spray to get good. But a lot of the effort is just finding where you're going to write and getting there and not getting arrested while you do it. Um, obviously, some people are better writers than others and uh, can throw stuff up really quick that looks good. Other people can stand there for two hours and it still looks like crap. But really, the challenge of it is finding a spot that isn't taken. Back in Philly in the 90s, it was hard to find a piece of wall that wasn't sprayed on. It was that bad. And then figuring out how to get there, whatever gear you need. Do I have to climb five fences? Can we go over a rooftop and then drop? Like, there's, it's, it's hard to explain unless you've done it. It's really crazy. And no game that covers graffiti even begins to address that stuff. And I think why is because that's when you start to realize that it's criminal. Mm. <laughs> when you're like plotting how to like climb over somebody's fence to climb up on their roof to get to this other roof that'll get you to this <laughs> billboard that has a ladder going up that you then climb up so you can get onto another. I mean, that's graffiti writing. And you have to do it a lot before you actually get good at it. So when you get there, whatever you throw up actually looks good. And it's there's a lot that goes into it, man. Like, you can't practice writing graffiti unless you do it. And when you do it, it takes balls. So, it's a rush. I'll say that much. But I'm glad I don't do it anymore. All right, maybe one more. Um, one from Vincent. My boy Vincent. Um, do you think Jedi Fallen Order gets shown first at the Game Awards, EA's E3 2019, or somewhere else? E3 2019. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, I don't think you're seeing anything this at Game Awards because you you have to put that through Lucasfilm, and they're just gonna be like, "Who? What?" No, I will say this forget. though. I mean, the way EA has handled that Star Wars license, there might be a little bit of heat under their ass to show some stuff. Cause... Yeah, but not for that. Not not, not there. I don't know. Like the only other thing I could think is that they might want to tie it in. Or put something out just to have something Star Wars to show in December because there's no movie this December. Yeah. But like, nah, I, I think you're gonna see it for the first time at E3. I'd agree with that, but I think there's a chance we could see it a, a little earlier than that because EA is completely. I would say it was, it, if they were do, if they were doing PSX, it would be more likely. But I don't think that I don't think we're gonna see that till next year. Here's our last one because this is a question I was hoping someone would ask. Uh, Toast nine one six X. Uh, regarding the Vulture interview, what's your take on Rockstar Games' workplace controversy? I didn't know there was a controversy around it, but... 100 yeah. hours is too long to work, and they shouldn't be bragging about it. Yeah, it's messed up. Like, I don't it know just shows you how he takes his workers for granted that he would bring mm -hmm. that up. Um, but that's... I don't, I don't need realistic horse testicles that badly. No, he... Those people should go home and have a life. No... Yeah, I mean, I've I had a friend who worked at Rockstar, and I have heard 
horrible stories about that place. Like, he's basically, I'm going to work here for four years. I'm going to get it on my resume. I'm going to parlay it. And that's exactly what he did. He worked on uh, GTA 4 for four years, handling all the voice work and Foley work for the game. And as soon as it was finished, he got out of there. And now he is making more money than he could ever spend as a sound engineer in New York. He work, just works like three days a week. Once he had GTA on his resume, like, he was just golden. So mm. that's what I would suggest to anybody working at Rockstar. They should do what my friend did and get, the, get it on the resume and get out of there. Ship something from Rockstar and then get out. Um, he hate, I don't want to say too much because they could maybe figure out who he was. So I'm not going to go too much into it. But, yeah, it's not a secret that Rockstar is uh, a bad place to work. It's well known in the industry, but it's all about that resume. Um, really brass and bold of him to say that in an interview that he's working as people like that, mm -hmm. especially with all the furor over unions and unionizing developers and all that stuff. Like it's just really bad. To but it also shows you that they are very insulated from everything else that's going on. Like those guys don't sit around and like look at sites like Sifted every day, like. They're just, and maybe that's why their games are so great, is because they're not really embedded into the games industry and games culture. They do their own thing. Like, those guys are all into, like, music and DJ culture and all this other stuff uh, where a lot of us would consume our time with games and reading Sifted or checking stuff on YouTube or whatever. That's not what they do. They, they're very social people, and they have very tight, like, social circles, and they go out and they party a lot, and they have a social life outside of the games thing. I mean, that's why you never see them at E3. That's why there are never any interviews. That's why that Vulture interview was such a big deal. And I can't believe that they got him. Probably the last time you see that for a while. It, yeah, I mean, that, that's probably the one interview that he'll do for Red Dead. He'll come back when GTA is ready to ship or whatever. Or but Bully 2. But... Or... I mean, I think it's shameful to work people like that. I mean, I've worked hours like that on Sifted, but it's my business, and like I'm my own boss. Yeah. So if anything, I mean, I can't fault myself for working myself. But the, the telltale thing should should teach you that. I mean, it, yeah. like, the, all those people that got laid off and no severance, you know, they worked all those extra hours for nothing. Yeah, the company doesn't care about you. The company's not there for you. Definitely not going to happen at Rockstar. If but you're, yeah, <laughs> but if you're gonna you're if gonna you're gonna paid. be there, get paid. Like don't do don't do work for free. And like, unless, I mean, if your dream is to work on a GTA game, I guess you got no choice. But like, there's better there's better places to be. Sometimes it's worth it to bite the bullet for yeah. a, for a few years. I mean, a bunch for I the know, long term game. Like I said, I know my some buddy, people who did that for the same thing you said. Talk about with Naughty Dog, but like, that's a that's an option when you're young and in your twenties and you just want to be part of this crazy crazy thing you've admired for so long. But there's yeah. a point at which you gotta. You, you gotta have some self-respect, frankly. Yep, my buddy was smart. He was there just long enough yeah. to be a long-term Rockstar employee. Shipped GTA 4, golden. He was golden. Mm -hmm. And he said, "You don't have to work in games. He's working in film and television and TV commercials. Places that have unions." Yep, he's frankly. in the yeah, he's in the union. So, so there you go. That's Game Face episode 144. Uh, again, special fa thanks to folks on YouTube for going and subscribing via Twitch Prime. Thanks to all the people in the chat. I mean, before the show even started today, like six of you guys subscribed via Twitch Prime. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Go buy these freaking t-shirts. I don't want to be wearing this same damn shirt six weeks from now. Let's get them sold so we can break even and I can wear something else. Pay extra to get the shirt he wore. Yeah. <laughs> I would sell this for more for, for sure, but I'm not going to do it. So get Shane Musk. <laughs> so will we be talking about Red Dead in episode 145? I think so, and that is that. No, that's next week. Isn't it? Yeah, I guess. I guess not. It's one like, more, it's one like more week days. to wait, people. Ten days away. We might be talking about it. We'll see. We'll see how the embargo. Maybe you're talking out. about it. <laughs> what? Maybe you'll be talking about it. I'm not going to play it till then. We'll. See. Uh, you don't know about. I don't know about that. October 26th, so we got a while. No, it's still a ways off. Yeah, definitely not a next week show. But uh, thanks to all the folks on YouTube who have been great about going and subscribing via Twitch Prime. It's a lot easier uh, to do going forward once you have it all set up. You just have to go to our channel and just click that button. Thanks to everybody who did it here on, uh, on the stream. We'll see you next week. Game Face is up and out.